coming on here. I appreciate it. Uh, like we were just talking about before we got on here, it's been so long since we've seen each other. But I always remember, like, we never, I don't think we were ever stationed together, but we ran into each other quite a bit, like, over the years, like, over our career. Like, I was always at Bragg doing something or maybe out in Nellis doing something. And uh, and I remember, <laughs> you remember, remember this, I oh, every time uh, we ran into each other, it was always, like, at the gym. Like, I would always go in the gym to, for a workout, and there you were, like, doing something in the gym. So it was, like, it was so funny how we'd always – Run into each other there, but <clears throat> I remember running into you at the competition. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did the which competition. one? Which, what year was that? Oh, I don't even want to mention the year. <laughs> it, was so, <laughs> it was so long ago. I don't even want to mention the year. All right. But yeah, I was like, it was like ninety. I don't know, ninety one, ninety two, something like that. Yeah, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate you coming on here. I I was uh, looking through your bio, and uh, I I'd say this to everybody that comes on, but it's like you. You never really know everything about a guy. You know, you mm -hmm. think you do, but then you, you know, you read through. I was reading through, and I was like, "Man, I forgot about that," or "I didn't know this." And so, I'm really interested in hearing uh, like your story and uh, and everything. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so, uh, but yeah, it's I don't really. The guys give me a hard time at work yeah. because I'm the old guy. You know, what I'm <laughs> right? <saying? laughs> so, so sometimes when guys ask me to to uh, the guys at work are always like, okay, tell us the Vietnam stories, you know? And I'm like, dude, come on. Really? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, uh, let's start from the beginning. Tell, like, tell me about your uh, beginnings. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tell me about that. Tell me about your upbringing and, and how well, that affected like, your uh, getting in the I come or... into, um, my dad was like, my dad told me I failed out of college. So my dad's like, you know, you got to do something. I mean, I wasn't ready for school at Same. the time, you know? So yeah. I hung out the house and got in a little trouble. And so, Dad took me down the recruiter and he said, let's go. So he went down to the recruiter and he, we walked, we, dad was a Marine. So he's like, like, let's go over to the Marine. You know, thank goodness he was closed, you know? So we went, <laughs> we walked next door to the air force guy and went in there and I asked the, uh, talk to the recruiter and the recruiter was like, you know, have you smoked weed? Have you done this? And I was like, yeah. And it, but it was back in the day. So he just kind of wrote it off, you know? Right. Right. And then he's like, He's like, I couldn't lie because my dad was right there, you know, so I, I was like, so you can't lie, you know, so yeah. I said, uh, he goes, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I want to be an air traffic controller. And he goes, oh, you want to control air? And I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. Right. <laughs> and so I get, there was nobody at, at the basic training that said, um, that said, hey, you know, this is what attack P is. There was, right. there was nobody there at the time, you know. So I get to basic training, get through basic training. They said, you're going to Herbert Field, Fort Walton Beach. And I was like, yes, you know, this is good. And then when I got there, I was I was there for three weeks prior to the, my uh, flight to start, class to start. Jeez. And then I'm, I'm – so I'm doing all the, the, the gopher boy stuff. You know, I'm going around oh, doing yeah. this, doing that. And then uh, I, uh, I'm looking around. I'm like, there's no radar. You know, I'm not sitting in some tower. There's not, you know, I'm like, there's guys walking in the woods, you know, right. and I'm like, okay, well, I guess we're going to, we're going to ride this out and see what happens, you know? So <laughs> I, uh, I go through it and I thought it was, it wasn't, it was, it was fun, you know? So I was yeah. like, cool, I'm not going to be sitting inside. I don't know where it's going to take me afterwards, but let's do it. And then my first assignment, they said, yeah, you're going to Fort Ord. And so I had to look up and see where Fort Ord is. And I'm like, I'm going to Monterey, Cal you know, Monterey, California. I was like, yes, let's do this. You know, so yeah, me yeah. and uh, Lopez, who is uh, Miguel, was in my my uh, flight. And uh, we ended up going there together. And when I showed up there, I was like, wow, it's right on the coast. Like, you know, I lived two miles from the beach, you know, or from the ocean. It, I wouldn't call it a beach. It's Monterey. So it's pretty rocky. But. Oh, yeah. I was like, this is amazing, you know, and uh, as an airman, you don't know what to expect. You know, you're just you're there doing whatever they tell you to do, you know. Right, right. But uh, I I loved it. And then Knipe was there. John shows up. Patton was already there. So I'm doing all this stuff and I'm working with um, the Buffalo's 3rd Brigade. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was an airman. I didn't know what was going on. You know, I didn't know what what to expect or. And they're like, uh, so they're like, well, let's see if we can mess with this guy. And I was like, okay, <laughs> let's, you know, here we go. And yeah, I was yeah. older, you know, I was 20, 21 at the time. So I'm older than your 18 year old, but, uh, you know, so I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go with the flow. And they tell you to do something, you do it. Right. 
So there was a, they said, Hey, they said, Davis, there's a vehicle broken down now. You got to take a tire. They got a flat tire. You want you to take one of the Humvees. And we just got Humvees, you know, we switched out from the Jeeps and right. got Humvees. So I grabbed the tire and I'm, I said, okay, where's the vehicle that I can take? And they go, oh, you can't take a vehicle. You got to, you got to just take it down to them. They're just down the road. I was what? like, okay. Uh, that's what I said. I was like, what? Really? <laughs> I was like, okay, this is now they're going to start messing with me. So here we go. Yeah. And so I grab the tire and I start rolling it down to him with, with the, the equipment they, you know, the, the wrench and stuff, the tire changer and stuff. And he's like, uh, they're like, no, you can't roll it. It's going to make it off balance. You got to carry it. <laughs> oh my God. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So I, I was like, so I took a rope, wrapped it through the, through the, uh, through the, the tire and then threw the tire on my back and I just start, and I was carrying it and I'm like, this is good. This sucks, you know, but they're telling you to do it. So you're doing it, you know? Right. Right. And they're going, Hey, hey you're as dumb as a rock. You know, you need, you're dumb as a rock. And I was like, and in my mind, I'm like, no, I'm not. I knew what you guys yeah. were doing. So I'm just going with the flow. And then that's how the nickname stuck. Yeah. But, uh, Jeez. <laughs> But I mean, it's so hilarious that like a guy like anybody else would have been like, this is impossible. But for a yeah, guy like yeah. you, it's like, yeah, all right, I'll just throw it on my all back. Right, all go. right, I'll do it. I mean, because it's like you're an airman, so whatever they tell you to do, you do. Sure. You know? So I was like, okay, I'll I'll do it. But as time went on, we started training and went to uh, went to Fort Hunter Liggett, which mm-hmm. was our training area there at at uh, Fort Ord, and that was that was seventy five miles away, but it was in more inland, and uh, it was just a huge just like just a training area yeah. and uh the guys took us down there and we had um back in the day we had f4s we were controlling it at hunter liggett and this was the first really my first you know what cast is about type. Sure. this was when i was just got implemented into it and then so we had f4s and we were working f4s down there and they wanted to do a flyby you know so this is my i'll never forget the first flyby <laughs> so we're sitting there we're controlling and um I got the map out and I'm doing the romance stuff, you know, and helping, yeah. helping the guy out, the captain out. And, uh, I look up and this F four is like, eye level with us <laughs> coming in and I'm looking at him like, Holy crap. Like it's, I, it's coming right at us. Cause we're on, yeah. on a mountain and I'm like, and he came so low that it bent the trees over and blew the maps and everything went flying. I'm like, this is insane. Like, and he just <laughs> popped off. And I'm like, this is, and then that was my first experience with that. And I just, I said, this is going to be a lot of fun, you know, Yeah. to, to do, right. to, to do this, you know, to get to, yeah, yeah, yeah. but so then after that, we went to, uh, um, I started hanging out with the guys. Nipe shows up, John shows up. So it's Nipe was there. Um, Patton was there. And then we had, um, uh, a couple other guys showed up and we were all, we would all hang out and they, the guys are like, you know, I wasn't much of a, of a gambler, you know, but they, yeah. the guys would, the guys would, they go up to the, to the room where the supplies at and they got a whole poker table set up. And like, I'm pulling watch downstairs while the guys upstairs are gambling for like <laughs> two, three hours a day. And I'm like, I'm like, I can't, I can't do this, you know, cause it's like, like everybody's like, where's everybody at? And I was like, I don't know. You know, they're out by the paint locker or whatever, you know, the normal stuff they're out by the paint, right? you know? And then, uh, so we were up at DLI one time and we'd all go out as, as, as a group of guys and the defense language institute's right there. It's a beautiful place. Yeah. So we'd always go to the NCO club there. And, but those are all the smart people up there right. and we're just the animals, you know? So we'd go into the DLI club and we're getting a little crazy and it's, it was David Cubes, Nipe, and myself, and a couple other guys. And uh, we just got in a fight with a bunch of Marines. Like, it was just go time. And yeah. we're looking around, and I'm like, dude, there's like 10 Marines, like three of us. And, like, so they didn't they didn't fight us because they didn't want to get kicked out of their school, you know? Oh, right, right. But, but, but we ended up getting arrested. So it was John, Dave, and me. We're in back of the cop car going back to Fort Ord, but for the MPs. And, you know, I'm like, oh, great. Here we go. Like, mm-hmm. this is now we got to meet the commander and this is going to go down. And um, we're there. And uh, John goes in first. So John's going straight to the cell first. 
I'm like, okay, he's an idiot. He's going to go in there first. And then so <laughs> Dave goes in, then I go in. But I figured it out. John was the smart one because there was only one bed in there. And John got the uh. bed. And he was, so the rest <laughs> of us didn't get it. You know, so. It's almost like he knew what he was doing. Like he's been there before probably, like, right? Uh, yeah, I was like, John's done this before. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay, and now, I, and, but we had to go up, apologize, got banned from there for, for about a, uh, for about a month. But we had to dress in our blues, go up and apologize. We got letter of reprimands, you know, and and for incite, you know, trying to start a fight. And so, but we were good after that. I mean, Ford Ord to me led me to, um, you know, you, it was the infantry, you know, so yeah. there wasn't no wasn't no armor. You're in the back of it. You know, you're driving your hum, Hummer around and there was no, um, and I realized that that's what I wanted to do. I didn't want to be stuck in a, in an armored vehicle. You know, to right. me that, that I didn't, I didn't like that. Yeah. I know so, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know if you were stationed with the armor, but I, I was in uh, Korea. We had one, one threes. And then in Germany we had one, one threes, but then after the before and yeah. after that, yeah, no, not so much. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know how it was going to help me later on, you know? Right. But um, I, I, as an airman and being there, I was, you know, you get in your trouble and you do your little, you know, you're, you're just trying to conform to the Air right. Force or to the military as a whole as an airman because you got to figure out where you fit in at, you know? Yeah. Well, it's funny that, like, like you, you say those stories, and that's kind of the way it was back then. I mean, you could get in that kind of that kind of trouble, and it was just like, all right, yeah. go apologize or here, take this yeah. LOR. But now – it's almost like career ending for some guys, you know? And yeah. yeah. I, I've talked to about a lot of people and it's like, if you could just give these, and like you were just saying, you're just trying to figure out how to do this thing, how to conform. Yeah. And you're get, people are hammering these airmen. It's like, dude, give him a chance. He, he's a yeah. kid. He has no idea what he's doing in life. Yep. Give him a chance, you know, slap him on the wrist, make him sand and paint, uh, you know, jerry cans or whatever the punishment is. And then yeah. let him, you know, do his career. Cause I mean, there's a lot of guys like you and I that uh, would, would, would not have been where we were, had we not had like good NCOs, good commanders that were like, all right, give this kid a second chance, you know? Yeah. And then I said, then I get over to Korea. They sent me to Osan. I'm a senior airman. I'm an Osan. I'm not a Casey. I'm not a Red Cloud. I'm an Osan. Oh, my you God. Know? And, and you're like, that's not a good place for an airman, you know? No. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yeah. this, is not, this is not very good for an airman. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, here we go. And so I hung out with this, the glow that we had at the group. So I was like, the glow at Major June, I'll never forget him. He's just like, he's like, all right, Rock, we're just going to, we're going to go here. There's a, there's a thing going on. Just clap and smile. Whatever they say, just clap and smile. And I was like, cool. And he would take me up to Casey and up to Red Cloud, you know, and I'd be his driver just because he knew, let's get you, you know, he know, he, he knew I was a ground pounder. So let's get him out of the, out of the office around, yeah. you know, away from those guys and stuff. And, uh, so we went up to, we'd go up there and, um, do, you know, hang out with the guys. He'd do whatever he want. I'd go over and see the guys at the, at the units or, or whatever. And, um, we ended up, uh, one of them we were driving and you know how thin the roads are there. Oh, the roads yeah. are real small. And I, I was driving the, a blazer at the time, you know, those big green blazers <laughs> and dude, I had no room. I had no room. And I was like, I was like, I'm going into into the ditch, you know, because the ditch drops, and then right. you come up to the rice paddy, slid that thing right in the ditch, man. And I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, there's nothing you can do, you know. Yeah. So we, so you know, I crashed that one, and then uh, they came up, had to tow it out, had to write a, you know, it wasn't my fault, but we wrote it, wrote a, had to write a accident report out and everything. So then it yeah. started going after that. But at Osan, I, I just I met. A, a friend of mine, you know, you get there and you, you, you go and you do a, um, you got to do that drunk thing. You know, you got to do the track thing when you first get there. Hey, this is what alcohol can do for you. Oh, and yeah, then yeah. if you get in trouble, you have people that are come back through that course. Right, right. Know, yeah. So this guy's sitting there and I look at him and his face has been all like beat up. And I'm looking at him like, dude, your face is like messed up. Like somebody really, you know beat you to you know down right. so i you know i'm just gonna ask him point blank and i'm gonna go i'm gonna like dude who messed you up you're like who did that to you you know <laughs> and he looked at me like i was insulted you know he's like he's like nobody he goes i fell in a binjo ditch <laughs> I'm like dude <laughs> i'm like dude i thought that was just make-believe i really think anybody ever did that you know yes yeah, same here yeah. you know what i'm saying i looked at him i was like wow you really did 
<laughs> uh, and then we, he ended up becoming one of my, one of my best friends and, and, uh, we hung out and hit the gym and, you know, yeah, yeah. and we did, we spent the time in the gym the whole time and then, uh, kind of hanging out with other airmen. I got in a little trouble again, you know, so downtown, I, the whole month of October back in 89, I, I just got over there. I was a year I could left, left to Ord in 89 was in Korea from 89 to 90. And then three months, four months before I was going to PCS, I was getting in trouble downtown and they had to pick me up at the cop station like four, <laughs> four, four weeks straight. And, um, what were you doing? I was just fighting. fighting. Or... It, was just stupid. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was stupid. Like, like now that I look back at it, like one of the, like Chuck and I would go down we had our girlfriends, you know, we go downtown and we there, but there were American girls from the base. We'd hang out. And then the army guys would come down from wherever, you know, from Red Cloud mm -hmm. or whatever. And Chuck and I were sitting there with our, with our girlfriends and they said, no fighting this weekend, no fight. And we're like, <laughs> okay, cool. We're in. And so Chuck's sitting there and his girlfriend, Becky's sitting there and this army guy comes up and ask him to ask her to dance. You know, I'm like, dude, the, their boyfriend's right there, you know? Right. And she goes, no, she goes, I'm with my boyfriend. And you know, the later, later the evening goes, the more drinks, the more courage, you know? So yeah, yeah. guy comes back up again and ask him again. And I was like, like, dude, there's no way, you know, like you can't like, dude, are you not seeing this? Right. And, right. and the girls are like, don't worry about it. Nothing's going on. You know? And she said, Becky again says, you know, I'm with this guy. And then, um, later on, the guy comes back up to her again, third time. And he rubs her face. Oh no. Dude, oh, he rubbed no. what as soon as he rubbed her face, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, dude, it's it's go time, you know. It's so, on, yeah. <laughs> so we were like, for, forget the girls. Chuck flips the table and he grabs the guy. And so I'm crowd control. So I'm moving everybody back, you know, and I'm pressing everybody back and letting them go at it. All of a sudden I'm getting hit in the back of the head. And I'm like, I'm like, man, what is I turn back and this guy's like, that's my friend. I said, well, that's my friend. Just let him go at it. And he hits me again. And I just reached back and grabbed him. And I started pounding him. <laughs> and our whole goal was if we, if the security forces came, we would just yell cops and we would all just take off, you know, like right, right. run with the crowd. Right. Well, I didn't hear, nobody yelled cops, you know, nobody yelled anything. And a guy grabs me and I, I it's not like I was strong or anything, but I just, you know, when you hip toss somebody, you just rotate. Right. And I rotated and it was the cop and he flipped oh. right in front of me. And I'm like, oh, I jumped up and I'm like, you know, <laughs> hands up. And I look around, no Chuck, no Chuck, you know, and I'm like, dude, he dashed. And I was the only one there, you know, and then, so I ended up getting in trouble that and um, they picked us up. And then following weekend, we got I got in a little fight with an officer that I didn't know was an officer. Yeah. And I go in and uh, Colonel Lemon was the commander of the group and it took me in gave me an article 15 and I got uh, 29 days correctional custody forfeiture. Really? Pay. Yeah. I was 29 wow. days, 29 days. And I did, I had forfeiture of some pay for two months and then I couldn't test for tech for two years, you know, wow. or staff for two years, you know? So I was like, uh, like, okay. Um, and I was just wanted to get out of Korea. You know, I was like, right. it's going and, and, and it, and I was like, I got to change. I have to do something to change. Yeah. And so, of course, they sent me to Fort, Fort Irwin. So I'm like, here we go. Let's go to Irwin, you know. And uh, I get to Irwin. And this guy, Lieutenant Colonel Robert Shaw, is the commander. He's the, he's my, he's the guy that saved, saved me. He re yeah. really did, really did. Calls me into his office. And he was looking at my PIF. And it was before it was on digits, you know, before everything was on the computer. And he looks at my folder. He's like, all right, Davis, you have six months. He goes, screw up one time in six months and you're gone. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And like, but Irwin was a good place for me yeah, because you can't go nowhere. Right. You know, you're 36 miles from the nearest town. You know, you're, you're not going anywhere. You're so, so I, secluded out there. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And so like, what trouble can I get into in six months, you know, right. and you got rotations that start at four in the morning get over at two o'clock in the afternoon, three o'clock in the afternoon. So you're not, those who don't know the Fort Irwin is where the national training center is yeah. a bunch of army units rotate in and out of there. So yeah, yeah, you're, you're secluded, you're, you're off the beaten path. 
you got a lot of stuff to do. Yeah, it's a perfect yeah. place. For- I mean, yeah. General Patton, when he wanted to do a tank war, and, and he was the one that created the uh, National Training Center, that's a perfect place for that, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was out there doing the romance thing, and, uh, I mean, dude, six months to the day, he called me into his office. And he goes, Rock, I don't know what happened in Korea. He goes, but you need to take this and you need to go to the burn barrel and throw it in the burn barrel. And I was like, I was like, awesome. So yeah. I went there and I threw it in the burn barrel and, and, uh, you know, we would go down, you know, it was all good after that. The unit was a really close unit and we would do a lot of things together, you know, and, yeah. and ended up, that's where I met my first wife and, uh, I met her in Victorville. And so I was living in Victorville and which is, uh, 76.4 miles from Fort Irwin. So I know exactly, I mean, and I would drive 76.4 miles every day, one way to work and one way back. And that was before, that was before monsters and you know, none of that stuff (laughs) before before any energy drinks, I was like driving all the way there, but we get there and, and I'm driving to Irwin and the uh, training was great. And I said, uh, they said, well, now it's time for you to go. Got to become an E-TAC. You know, and I was like, okay. I was like, um, you know, what's that? I figured out what it was. And then that's when we started, you know, you volunteer to do that. At the time, right. they weren't assigning people to do it. You volunteered. So I said, Okay, and, and Lunk and those guys, Lunkquist and those guys were coming out to Irwin, and the guys would rotate out to Irwin, you know, in the rotations when the Army guys would do the rotations, and they would bring the Air Force guys with them, the TACPs with them. So I was running right. into a lot of guys, and I would invite them over to the to my apartment. I mean, there's 20 dudes at my apartment, you know. <laughs> so it's like, but we're we're cooking out and we're letting them use the pool after the rotation. You know, get them away from NTC, you know, and that was sure. my. That was my little treat to those guys. And and you get to meet guys. Lunk and I went through tech school together. And so Lunk's like, hey, man, you got to come to Bragg. You got to come to Bragg. You got to come to Bragg. And I was like, well, I don't know how I'm going to get out of here. So when, you know, I didn't know you could put in paperwork or whatever, you know. Nobody sure. Told me how to do that. So right. ended up uh, going to e- ETAC, but I sold it to him. I said, hey, I'm going on the, the, East Coast, why don't I just go up? Can I go to airborne school while I'm there? I mean, it saves you money, you know, it saves money. And it was my selling point. And I ended up uh, selling them uh, to go to airborne school. So I trained and went to airborne school, went to ETAC, came back. My, uh, I came back and I was like, okay, I'm going to put my volunteer paperwork in and go to Bragg. Because, you know, back in the day that Bragg was where, to me, that was where everything was, you know, that was where everybody wanted to be. So I get back and, um, I get my eval, my evals on top of top of TV Hill there. I think, I can't remember who it was, but he's like, Hey, I'll be on the truck. You got a set of a (laughs) tens. He went and slept in the truck and I'm controlling a tens for like an hour and a half. And I'm like, like, all right. And, and I get done it. And I was like, and he's like, yeah, you're good. And I was like, all right, cool. So, so you didn't kill yourself, so that's a you're yeah, 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 you're good. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, you drop anything. Yeah, you're good. And so I ended up, uh, I put my volunteer paperwork in, and uh, I ended up PCSing to Bragg, which was, which is where that's where my career changed. But if it wasn't for Colonel Robertshaw, man, I'm telling you, if I could find that guy, I would thank him because he's the one that now I conformed, you know. So now, yeah. I'm, yeah. Now I'm in the military now, and I understand what we're what we're supposed to do and and all right. that stuff. You know? How lucky that, uh, like you said, all that stuff we had no computers back then at all. So mm-hmm. like you could like you know you hear about guys taking stuff out of their medical records, yeah. you know, yep. piffs get burned. I mean it's it was, a, yeah. it was a good time. It was a good time to get by with stuff. <laughs> it was a little different because you you like the TAC P career field was so it was new, right? So. So people were trying to figure out where we fit in and we're just like, we're working with the army. And, you know, and then you have guys that are, when you're working with the army, you're like, no, I can't do that. No, I can't, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm in the air force. I don't have to do that. Right. We we're sitting in one of the, we we're in a um, debrief and it was in a bunch of tents out in the middle of the desert at Irwin. And this young, young, uh, air, uh, young 
lieutenant, Air Force lieutenant, who was an A-10 pilot, you know, because back then we didn't have any officers. So this guy, right, right. him and this other lieutenant were sitting in this debrief, and I'm the OC there. I'm the observer controller that watches everything and, and for the Air Force side of the house. And the colonel, you know, they're having a debrief. And I look over, and this lieutenant is kicking like a tarantula. I'm like, dude, like, I'm like, I was like, sir, you need to pay attention, you know, because he, he, you know how colonels are. They got eyes in the back of their head, you know. Sure. Like, you better pay attention. And he's messing around with this tarantula and messing around. And the colonel finally looks at, over at him. He goes, you you, you two, out. Get out. I looked over at him. I said, told you. Like, I, told I'm you. Not, you know, I told you, dude. And he ended up getting thrown out. But, I mean, then you train the guys and you got to tell them, hey, pay attention. You know, this is yeah. where the Army's learning. So you have to learn with them. You know, now I'm right. starting to mature a little bit. It's starting to scare me, you know, because now I'm starting to <laughs> understand yeah. what's going on. You know, like, oh, yeah, I'm not, yeah. not an airman anymore. I got responsibility, you know. But yeah. Ended up going yeah. to brag and uh, got there. And I, when I went to jump school, I, f- I faked my hearing test. Oh, yeah. I, I did. I Because I, I went in there and I failed. I was like, I'm not going to pass. When I was at Irwin, the lady's like, yeah, you'll pass. And she was tapping her finger every time the the sound would go off. Oh, really? and, I passed it, and I passed it, you know, so I go to jump school, not realizing that when you get to brag, you have to get another one. Oh, man. Because it's a whole new physical. Right, right. I thought I was good. Oh, no. So, and then I, <laughs> I failed that one. So they had to re- just just to adjusted my baseline, you know, but I had to go through sure, a bunch sure. of stuff. And I, so I got my first jump at Luzon and um, uh, I almost, I didn't get to go to um, Desert Storm because I was out of Irwin. So oh, okay. I, they didn't send us because we were a training unit and we were low on the total pole. Sure. Almost got in a fight with the superintendent out there because I wanted to go sure. and they wouldn't send us. But so I get to brag and finally got through the physical part and, or the, hearing stuff and um i was with uh, third brigade it was luck sean o'neill keith person um lindsey x beef like all the lutz all these guys were in were in in the in the flight you know man and it was so much fun because it was just like you know black was there minion was there you know, yeah. all we just had a whole group of guys that later on you you realize you know these guys become heroes you know and become right. chiefs and stuff and it's amazing how far they 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 come when when you're there you don't know because you're in there sure you know and um, I finally made staff and uh, so I'm at the brigade and I realized that the army that you really have to implement yourself into the army you know you have to de- get in there. And I was with my unit so much that they wanted to put a desk at the at the brigade, you know, at the battalion for me. Yeah, you know, yeah. They're like, Rock, hey, we got a desk for you. If, you know, when you come over here, this is where if you want to stay here and work, I was like, okay, I'm not going that far. You know, right. <laughs> I'm not doing that far, but I appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, I was there for like two, two years, and then I was like, you know, I was with shaky and jolly and. Um, they were in our unit, this young guys, and did NTC and JRTC rotations and stuff. And uh, I thought, well, it's time to do something different, mm-hmm. you know, because you don't want you don't want. I was like, they worked over at Simmons, worked with the the kilos, and I was like, you know what, I want to do that. Yeah, let me see if I could get into that. And I I had my stuff squared away. I mean, my vehicle is always always good to go. My radios were working. I. Um, I was in good with the support guys because, you know, after a while, you're like, you know, everybody made fun of the support guys. You know, they're like, yeah, "Ah, let's just make fun of them and stuff. And we're like, then I realized you can't do that because these are the guys that fix your stuff, man. Like, right. That's why my vehicle is always squared away because I was always good to those guys. And, you know, and I said, well, I got to switch over. And and, um, so as I was going through the transition, Lunk and Lindsay, um, and Jazz, Erickson, and all yeah. the guys, you know, all the guys that were Rangers and stuff, decided to throw on a big training event up at Fort Pickett. And so, okay. so we go up to Fort Pickett for a week. And, um, you know, Andrew Kubik, you know, yep, Kubik yep. was there. So 
Cubic and Jazz and all of us, and we went up there and we were learning how to do boat ops and we did um, navs and uh, we jumped in and then um, they had an escape and evade one night. So it was just to escape and <laughs> evade, right? So they You're paired right. us up. They paired us up. And if you got caught, they threw you in and you had to do interrogation. You know? So so the <laughs> Lindsay and all those guys had it all set up. So uh, Andy, Cubic and I were partners. And so we're okay. like, we, and each point you go to, you get a, like a, first one you go to, you get your jacket. Next one you go to, you get water. Next one you go to, so there's something at each point that you, that you got. It's you know? cool. So I brought iodine pills with me because I was like, man, if we, you know, I'm going to throw some iodine in my, in my canteen and I'll have some, right. some water, you know, if I get it out of the creek or whatever. So Andy and I, it's a night nav. And so we're escaping and evading. And so we come up and it's really cold and I didn't want to, we didn't want to go in the creek and there's a bridge. So one of our sport guys, Mo's standing there and he's got his weapon and he's got the blanks on it. And if they tell you to stop, you have to stop and raise your hands. And then they flexi cuff you and take you in. Right. Yeah. yeah. So Cubic and I are like, man, we're going to make it across this bridge. We're just haul ass, make it across <laughs> the bridge. He ain't going to get us. So right as soon as he turned, we booked across the bridge and he yelled, halt, halt, you know, stop. So he had to stop. And we're like, we got caught, you know? <laughs> right. right. <laughs> <laughs> says, and so he calls on the radio and he says, okay. And they, you know, Lunk's on the other end. He says, bring him to the to intersection. We'll come and pick him up. And they're like, and those guys' eyes light up because like, yeah, now we can interrogate somebody and we can torture him, you know? Or whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, they're like, yeah, we got him. And so I'm reaching, I'm behind my back, hands behind my back. I pop, my flexi cuff is off. You know, I popped it off. Yeah. And I, I kind of elbow Andy and I showed him my hand, my arm. And Andy had broke his off too. And he shows me his <laughs> arm and I'm like, cool. And so we... We tackle Mo, steal his gun, you know, steal his weapon, flex and cut him, and we bolted, you know. And um, so we're like, dude, we had it. We ran into the woods, and you can hear him driving around, yelling at us, trying to get us yeah, out yeah. of the woods, you know. <laughs> and he's like, we're like, dude, we're just gonna stay here. We must have laid in the in the in the woods for like three hours because we wouldn't <laughs> want to get caught, you know. Yeah. So we ended up. We said we're just gonna go straight to the last point so we went straight to the last point and jazz and jazz is there erickson's there and jazz is we it's freezing so andy and i spooning you know we we you know we're spooning and and we four five thirty in the morning you know how right when that sun comes up when it's really super cold and oh yeah so we make it to the point and jazz is like all right rock give me the, give me the weapon and i'm like no i was like we escape and we evade it i'm not giving you the weapon because you're going to throw us into the to the interrogation, you know, Jazz's like, no, just give me the weapon. I was like, no, you know, I kept telling him no. <laughs> right. And he's finally like, he's finally like, just give me the weapon. So I gave him the weapon and he's like, all right, you guys are done for the day. Just go back, shower and get cleaned up and get some chow. And I was like, cool. But they had taken Mo and put him in the interrogation. <laughs> <for living. laughs> so he was beat up all night. Oh my God. Lindsay and them guys were beating him up all night. And, uh, <laughs> But so anyway, I come back and we ended up going, to, I uh, got selected and went over to Simmons and started working with the age 64s and oh, okay. the OIH 58s at the time. And um, we started getting ready to deploy to Haiti. So Haiti was going to be my seventh jump into Haiti was, that was my, going to be my seventh jump. Wow. When Haiti went down and I was like, I was like, okay, here we go. Mikey Brown was there. Minion was there. We're all, all, all in there and, um, locked down and they were handing out, it was getting real. Cause now they're handing out ammo, you know, yeah. like, here we go. Handing out ammo, handing out grenades. I got this young captain with me and I'm like, okay, well, we're going to jump in, jump in 500 feet into the soccer field in, in Port-au-Prince, you know? Yeah. So we're going through the line. They're giving us our parachutes and stuff. And the guy goes to give me my reserve, you know, and I was like, I don't need it. I was like, I don't want the reserve. And he's like, well, you got to take it. He says, Sergeant Davis, you have to take it. And I was like, no. I was like, why? It's 30 pounds. I'm jumping at 500 feet. Yeah. It takes 250 feet for the chute to open up. And it's going to take me another 50 feet to realize my, my chute's not open, you know? <laughs> right. And then by the time I go to pull it, I'm going to hit the ground, you know? So there's no reason for extra weight. All right. And he's like, you have to take it. And I was like, all right. 
So <laughs> uh, I took it and then uh, we got onto the um, ramp and, and they didn't. Um, one of the guys, one of the planes were in the air or one group of guys were in the air. We were getting ready to load. And then the rumor, you know, how the rumor goes down yeah, through yeah. the ranks and you could tell they said, yeah, it's scratched. We're not going to jump because the guy gave up and left or whatever. Oh, right, right. Yeah, so he quit, he gave up. They gave him money, and they left. And um, so we all got locked down and stuff, had to turn in all our ammo and stuff. But, I mean, that was Dang. my first realistic of going to war. Sure. And then when we got over to Simmons, I had Carwin Wright was with me. We had um, – I can't remember who else was there with, with me there. But I was over there for a couple of years, you know, and I, and I liked it. I really liked it. But I won't mention names, but the boss I had was not – it's not, you know, not the best. Not what I want. Yeah, yeah, not what I wanted. And I had. Well, hold on. Already, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, what What is that? Like, what are you talking about when you say you went over to Simmons? Like, what'd you guys do with the helicopters? I'm not. Well, I'm not we familiar went. With that we, mission. Yeah, we we went into the the helos and we would control from the helos. Oh, okay. And okay. So, so we'd be like awesome. with the command section up there, and we'd fly in, and we did a couple exercises. Like one of the exercises was. We're in the in the um, 60s, and you would go f- like it's all about timing. So you would sure. go to one battle position, move to the next battle position, right behind the the 64s or the 58s, whatever's in front, and then you would control them from there. Oh, and okay. So you really oh, didn't have cool. eyes on. It was all like Type Two or whatever. You know, it was yeah, it, yeah. You didn't have eyes on, but one of the helos we were in, it was just me. I had my radio set up, and it was me, the sergeant major like three Fulberg colonels and two other light colonels, you know, yeah. and the Sergeant major elbows me. And he goes, he goes, Davis, you know what? If this helicopter goes down, he goes in front of the Fayetteville observer. There's going to have all the colonels and everything. And we're going to be on like page 10. I was like, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I was like, no kidding. You know, but we got to control and we went to, uh, um, and we'd always work in the strike cell with those guys at, okay. at JRTC or something like that. So you got to, I got to understand how the helos work and how they operate it. And, and they're just like the air force. They, they go for a certain amount, you know, you have a certain amount of, uh, uh, weight that you can have certain amount of fuel. So you you're on and off the objective because you can't stick around because sure. you got to go back and refuel. Right. So I, I, I liked it. I got in close with my army unit there. They were more like the Air Force guys than the regular army because they're pilots, you know, and warrant officers sure, sure. and stuff. So, yeah, it was uh, it was a pretty good experience. And then, yeah. like I said, then I I was like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to do that, you know. I, uh, they said, hey, we got a soft selection coming up, and they had taken Lunk, they had taken Lindsay, they had taken Klukas, they had taken a bunch of guys, and moved them over to the soft side of the house and was building that up over there. And, you know, Eddie Morales, right. You know, all those guys had already moved over there and they were like, we're going to have a selection and nobody knew about it. You know, they was, they put it out, but nobody really, you know, decided to do it. So myself, yeah. Minion and Sipa- uh, uh, six pack did it. Suspania. Okay. Yeah. So it was us three. Stamey was running it, you know, Jazz was over there. So it was a bunch of those guys. And yeah, we, it had everything to do with like, we go over there, we didn't know what to expect. You had to right. do a six mile run in a certain amount of time. You had to do a PT test. You had to do an obstacle course. You had to take a job knowledge test. And then you had to control night nav, day nav, you know, this whole, a whole spiel. And uh, we we're doing a day nav. And so they sent us in different ways. Sean would go one way, six, six pack would go another way. And then I'd go another way, but we'd cross paths. And they said, no walking the roads, no walking the roads. Cause they'd have guys driving around. Yeah. And, um, we're driving and there's, I see, I was like, this, this stuff in front of me is like too thick. Like I'm not walking through it. I'm like, I, I'm not going to do it. Right. You know, I got all my gear on. I got my rucksack sure. on it. And I'm like, I'm not walking through there. So and you're a bigger said, dude anyway, so it's not, it's yeah, not yeah, even like, yeah. you know, yeah. shimmy through stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm going to run. I was just run down the road real fast, you know. <laughs> so I'm going to run down the road. <laughs> and I hear, I hear, and I look back and it's Stamey's truck. And I'm like, oh, oh no. gosh, it's Stamey. So I dove into the ditch like I was hiding, you know. <laughs> right. 
there's there's no hiding. And <laughs> Stamey stops and he gets out and he goes, all right, Rock, what are you doing? He goes, you know you're not supposed to walk the roads. I was like, yeah, but it's too thick over there and there's a fence and stuff. And I was like, I was just, he said, where are you at? I showed him where I was at on the map. I said, I'm going to go up here and make it right, get back on my heading, and then I'll just keep going. He's like, all right. He goes, I'm giving you 10 minutes. If I come back and I see you on the road, you're out of the course. I was like, okay. So I go down, went, started walking. And so that night I made it, but six pack got lost. Like he was, he walked in that stuff and couldn't get out of it. Got turned around for like four or five hours. Oh, And so we go out, we're in these field, in the field, we're setting up our little hooches. We're going to crash for the night. And it started lightning. And so they grabbed everybody, all three of us and moved us into a GP medium tent and said, you guys got to stay in here. No talking. (laughs) But as soon as they walked away, we were all talking, you know, Sure. (laughs) and six pack is like, rock, did you go, did you walk through that stuff that I walked through? And I was like, I was like, yeah, I made it right through it, dude. Like made it right through it. <laughs> and he's like, you liar, man. I was like, no, dude, I walked went right through there. Ten years, ten years I held that in until oh, yeah. I finally saw until I finally saw him. I'm like, no, dude, I didn't walk through there. I was like, I walked around. He's like, I knew it. I knew it. But uh, so I ended up making it through that and uh went over, they assigned me to third group. So that was my first experience was the soft was just it was pre-war. Yeah. So I got over to third group and it was me, Beef, Bo Cook, um, Morales. And uh, those were, that was us four. Eddie was in charge. So it was us four over there. And I was still a staff at the time. And um, uh, I loved it. I mean, yeah, that's a good train. Oh, yeah. You train all the guys. Like I was at Alpha Company and you just train all the guys on cast. Yeah. So I had spreadsheet out. I go on cast trips. I went to standby at free fall school, made it into free fall school. I went to Pathfinder, nice. you know, so I get into free, free fall school and um, come back. And now the only team though, I was going with three, two, four all the time because they were free fall school, free fall team. <laughs> so I would go to UI with them a lot just to jump, you know? Right. And um, we did a bunch of red flags out here and, and that's when you realize as an, as a staff sergeant, I was doing officer duties. I mean, it's like everything's on you. Like in that company, they were relying on you. There was nobody oh, yeah. else. There was nothing, you know, you, you had to go to the training meetings. You had to set up training. You went to train with them. There was no, um, Hey, I got an airman to do this. You know, it was, right. it was you that was, that was doing it. And I got really good and tight with that, with that uh, group of guys. We, you know, we go down to, um, TDY, we, the TDYs we did, we did one down in Yuma and it was a, uh, it was a NTC, but we ran it out of Yuma okay. and they had guys in different locations across the West. Nice. You know, it was just different guys and di- different teams in different areas. And we ran it there. We were down in Florida in Stark, Florida, right outside uh, Jacksonville. Okay. And we were running, uh, we had guys in all over the different Eastern part, Southeastern part of the U S running a JRTZ here, but you learned and you started picking up. And then that's where I started. It was really, you know, your professionalism set in, you know, because now you got to do, you've been there, you know, that you get this, all those guys are, they're professionals and you got to be professionals. And then you realize how the SF guys work and how they're, they're going along. And it was just, to me, it was, it was just a great, great experience. Like I, I, and, you know, the guys at the 14th, they all looked up at, to you, you know, because you're, wow, you're working with the SF guys, you know, and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And, but I would go back and I'd jump with them. I'd do static line with them, you know, because I wanted, I wanted them to know that, that I'm still, I'm still part of them guys. You know, I didn't sure. have an ego. I didn't have a, I didn't want to have an ego. I wanted just to be humble and just let them know that. And they're like, how did you get over there, Rock? How did you do it? I was like, dude, just do your job. If you yeah. do your job and selection comes up, just do your job. I said, you don't have to beat your chest. People are going to see you just do your job, you know? Right. So that was, uh, I was there for like three and a half years, trained every team on, on, um, on CAS, except for one of the B teams, but yeah. I trained all the other teams on CAS and stuff. And it was just, I, I loved it. We had the team room where Griff was in there. We yeah. Had, you know, like 
all of us were in the team room, you know, and, and I come back on a Friday. I was like, dude, where are you guys at? Oh, we're, you know, we're at B-dubs, you know, <laughs> drinking our happy hour at one o'clock on a Friday afternoon. And I, I was like, dude, there's meetings. And they're like, yeah, you, you got it. I was like, I, was like, I had Hoffman, Weeder, you know, so all those guys were in there and it was just, uh, it was a lot of fun in, yeah. in, in the unit. And, um, so after that, uh, they sent me back over to Korea and I was on the way to Korea. I was going to be at Red Cloud and I was like, I don't want to be a Red Cloud because <laughs> I've looked at Red Cloud like Osan and I was just thinking trouble. Yeah. You, you know, that sets in, you're like, oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. It's trouble. And this was 2000 when I got over there and I was like, this is, this is going to be, this is going to be trouble. Were you having you know? flashbacks of like your previous oh. career? <laughs> oh yeah. I'm like, yeah. this is like, and I'm still married to my son's mom, you know? And so I'm like, this is going to be, this is trouble. You know, I can't, yeah. I can't do this. And I was like, I got to go to Red Cloud or Camp Casey. I said, I got to go to Camp Casey. So there was some guys up at, at Casey that I knew they pulled some strings and one of the guys, Warren Williams, was supposed to go to Casey. And I was going to Red Cloud. They swapped us. Nice. And he calls me up. He's like, Rock, how did you do that? How did you switch? I'm gonna, you know, it's like, it's like, I don't know. I don't know, dude. I, say, I don't know. I didn't have nothing to do with it. Yeah, so, yeah. I, uh, so I ended up going to Casey and um, I, I get to Casey and um, they put me with this 2-9 infantry. And uh, so I was like, this is awesome we were working you know and we're they gave me gave me a couple guys and minion was there um newman was there um so it's a bunch of guys that i knew that were just on their tail end of the of their tour over there okay um Joan, jonesy gary jones came over there um so we had a bunch of guys and a lot of the guys were like they didn't like the airborne guys you know because we were at at Bragg, you know and these guys were tank guys you know Sure. And so they didn't, you know, they didn't like us. And uh, one of the guys come up to me and they said, you know, Davis, we don't like airborne guys, you know, so you better make sure your, your shit's together, you know. So oh, I, was like, really? I was like, okay, all right, I get it, you know. So yeah, yeah. I all my guys, I had them all squared away, you know. I got, I had all the guys uh, stuff squared away. And one day he comes down and he says, well, I got to check your, I'm going to check it. If you guys want a four-day weekend, I'm going to check your stuff and make sure it's all squared away. Yeah. Why had everybody's lock, everybody's cages all set up the exact same? So if you went in there, everything was in order. Yeah. And um, because if it looks good, you know. Yeah, it, for sure. Whether it's messed up or not, if it looks good. It looks they, don't dig, they don't dig deeper if it's like, oh, that looks yeah, good. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, looks yeah. good. You know, so, yeah, yeah. little smoke and mirrors, you know. So I was like, <laughs> right. cool. <laughs> so I was like, cool. And, uh, man, what was his name? He comes in, he looks at it, looks at all the stuff. And he's like, man, he's like, Davis, you got, you got this, you got you guys squared away. You got your flight squared away. And I was like, I was a tech sergeant at the time. So I was like, I was like, yeah, I was like, thanks. He's like, you know, you're changing my mind on airborne guys. And I was like, cool. I was like, I'm just here to do my job. I said, I just right. want to make sure the unit's squared away. You know, we go out patrol eight tens at the, at the hill and stuff. Had Jimmy Seabrooks there. Weeder comes over there, you know. Nice. And uh, so we're out controlling and stuff. And uh, you know how cold it gets in Korea, man. Freezing oh, yeah. cold. Bone chilling cold, yeah. Bone chilling cold. I mean, you could wear three layers of cold, three layers, and still be freezing. Yeah. And we went out on this hill one. It was, I think it was a Friday night or something. It was freezing. I told the guys, just stay in the vehicle. I'll control this area. And, you know, you guys... Well, you can mark it down in your, as a control, but I said, right. we don't, we don't need everybody on the hill freezing, freezing their ass off, you know? So yeah, yeah. I get at the top of the hill and control some May tens and, um, my feet, I've got Gore-Tex socks on, but it's just, it, my feet are freezing. Everything else yeah. is okay, but my feet are freezing. The guy in the A-10 gets done and he's leaving. He's like, is it cold down there? I was like, yeah. He goes, <laughs> he goes, I got the heater on up here. I said, okay, yeah, I'll see you later. I just said, I, yeah, right. I was like, all right, thanks, dude. And yeah. uh, so I got off the hill and the guys were cool. We got back and um, then there was the time Jimmy 
Seabrooks and Weeder go control air. And at the time they didn't have, they just started getting GPSs into the planes, you know, okay. into the planes themselves. Well, these guys, F-18s come off the ships and they didn't have, they didn't have GPSs. Right. And so they had their maps and everything. Well, as they check on, the, the guys down at Osan sent them to one spot where they were supposed to go. Well, nobody's controlling over there. So they send them to another spot. Now they have half the map, right? So they did not have the other half of the map. Well, then they send them to another spot where Weeder and, and CB's at. Yeah. And they're controlling. And we're listening on the radio back at the shop, listen to them control. And um, all of a sudden they, you know, I think, I don't know if CB was controlling or Weeder, but they're like, hey, you see the curve in the river? Yep, got the curve in the river. You see this, blah, blah, yep, I see that, I got it. And they're like, man, we don't hear you. Like, we, we, don't, we don't hear you at all. It's like, man, he's like, are you sure you're here? And all of a sudden you hear, come over the radio, the Kayak down at Osan say, hey, you need to do 180 due south right now. 180 due south and then go back to the ship you know we're we're canceling they had flown six miles into north korea oh my god so they were on the other side and and it was like and they came back and they had to because they didn't have the maps for it. you know they didn't yeah yeah, yeah. that the river was the same everything was the same except they were in north korea man they're looking and, to get shot down Exactly. So, but North Korea is like, yeah, we saw him. We saw him. We didn't. No, you didn't. You didn't yeah. see him. You didn't, you didn't see him, dude. <laughs> and so they, so they get back. They were grounded. Jimmy and, uh, and Seabrooks and Weeder come back. They have to get their blues on and they have to go to Osan now to get debriefed because this is an international incident. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it makes CNN and everything. And so, oh, man. They, so they were down there and they came back and they figured out what happened because they kept shifting the guys over and the guys didn't have the maps. So it really wasn't anybody's fault, you know, but sure. they had to double check everything. And uh, man, that could have been bad. So I didn't get in any trouble in Korea. Nice. Leahy was over there, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Krebs was over there. We had a bunch of guys. We uh, did the Manchu Mile, you know, so they, it was me, Jeff Rick. Mike Hoffman and Brett Ramos. Okay. So we did a, the 25 mile march at night and they, they do it in the middle of the night and you're walking all the way around TDC and, you know, and you're just doing the 25 mile march and, and you're walking four miles an hour with that, you know, but I'm not a runner. I never yeah. was a runner, but Hoff and Brett were runners and yep. they would try to run and the army would tell them to slow down because you can't, it's not supposed to go that fast. Right, right. And so we're doing the Manchu Mile. We come around. It's, it's it's starting to get daylight out. And Brett and Hoff are like, let's run up and grab the guide on and sprint across, be the Air Force guys, the first ones to cross yeah, yeah. the line. You know, so we run, <laughs> run by the barracks and we're yelling at everybody because they're sleeping, you know, and we're yelling at them. It's Saturday morning and we're yelling at them, right. you know, or it's Friday morning. We're yelling at them. It's five in the morning, whatever. Well, yeah. Hoff and, and, and Brett run up to grab the guide on and this, the Sergeant major sitting there and he's like run, walking with him. He's like, air force, you grab that. That'll be the last thing you do. If you grab <laughs> that, that guide on, you know, so they, so they couldn't grab the guide on, you know, but we ended up doing the, the, the Manchu mile and, and got our little belt buckle and stuff. And, uh, yeah. I mean, it was, it was the experience and everything over there. I, I controlled more air as much as, a little less than I did at Irwin because Irwin, I controlled so much air that, right. you know, that you had, you know, there's one time I had 90 something controls in one month. It was just because it was not nonstop. And yeah. over there, I liked it up there because you were doing the job, stayed out of the trouble, went to the ice house, already did the <laughs> right, ice right. house, you know, so. Yeah. And, uh, you know, whatever trouble happened, what happened in the ice house. So right, did, right. Exactly. It, it, it no one else had any out. exposure no to it. Yeah. 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 It's all in-house. Every, yeah. That was all in-house. It was good. It was a good time. And uh, that was 2000 and 2001. So I was coming back and I was like, man, I, I don't, I don't know where they're going to send me. I want to go back to Bragg. Yeah. So I put my paperwork back in to go to soft again, to go over work with the soft side of the house again. And 
I'm nervous. Seventh group's at Bragg at this time. Third group's at Bragg. And I'm like, I want to go back. I want to go back. And so this was, uh, I put my paperwork in. They said, there's an opening at Bragg. We got it at seventh group. I want to go back to third group, but that's fine. I'll take seventh group, you know? Sure. So I went over to seventh group and Chachi was over there now. Nice. So everybody was over. Bo Cook was there. So we were all at, 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 you know, we're back there at Bragg. And so I'm at seventh group. I get back from Korea, probably back uh, two weeks, uh, and they send me to JRTC. So I'm at JRTC. I'm like, this is crazy. I just got back, you know? Right. So I get back from there and from JRTC, wife's not happy. So September 11th, I'm watching, I'm at home getting my whole baggage back from Korea. And I watch everything unfold on TV. And I'm like, yeah. this is insane. I was like, I'm sitting there watching it. And I'm like, I, this is not just an accident. Right. And so my wife at the time calls me up and she's like, are you watching this? And I said, yeah, this isn't, this is deliberate. And so I'm watching it and I'm like, I'm like, we're on. I said, I don't, I don't think I'm going to be here. And she's like, what do you mean? I said, something's going on. I don't think I'm going to be here. Yeah. And the next day we tried to get into Bragg, but it, it was so packed. The roads, because they're checking everybody, you know, so now right. they figure out what's going on. It's, which is usually a 10 minute drive is now like eight hours. Yeah. So I just turned around and went back home. He couldn't get on. And after a couple of days, we got back on and they briefed us up what happened and what was going on. And then they're like, okay, now we got to go to Afghanistan. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, I go, we're looking for volunteers to go over and support fifth group. Boom. You know, raise our hands, you know, Tomod, me, Brian, Karen, you know, all of us at stay me, yeah. all of us raising our hands, you know? And, uh, so they said, instead of going to Fort Campbell to meet him, we're just going to go straight and meet him. Uh, I can't remember where we met him in Baltimore, I think. And then we okay. jumped on the plane with him in Baltimore to go over there. And so we get all our stuff together and I'm just finishing up my CCF. And I'm like, this is my last class. I just got to, you know, I'm yeah. one week from deploying. And I'm like, I got to, if I got to go to the next class, if I can't make the next class, because the instructor said, if you don't make the next class, you fail. And I'm like, I'm not going to make it, you know? And luckily he said, all right, everybody's done. We don't have to show up for the next class. I was like, nice. cool. Finished my CCAF. Got on the plane, flew to Baltimore, flew, loaded up with those guys, and um, we're on our way over. You know, you don't know what to expect. You know, you're sure. like, here we go. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. And we get over there. We land in K2 up in Uzbekistan. And, um, you know, I get off the plane, and, you know, I have that hair on the back of your neck stands up. I'm like, we're stepping into, this is Russian territory. Like, this is... Like I look over, see Mig sitting on the runway, you know, and I'm yeah. like, this is absolutely crazy, you know? All right. I, I look over and there's Mig sitting there and I'm like, but they're not running because right. they half of them have flats because they don't have gas. They don't have nothing, but it looks good from the air. <laughs> yeah, right. If you look from the air, you're like, man, this has got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. But I'm still, I walk up and I'll never forget it. I go walk up in the line and I learned through the SF that you – that you only have can have a certain amount of people in in a country at one time, and you have to have your name has to be on that list to clear through that country. Oh, okay. So your name's on the list, and you show them the list, and then the list goes. Okay, if your name's on here, you could come in. So I hand him my ID card, and it's a Russian guy, and he's looking at my the list, and my name's on the list, so he lets me go through. Nice, and you know, so it's really it's like you're. You know, you're just looking at the guy like, dude, I, this is cold Crazy. war. You know, you're thinking cold yeah. war. You're thinking, dude, you're yeah. you're our, you're our bat, you're our enemy, but we're gonna go do this. So we go in there, and they have uh, we all make it through. There's there's uh, eight of us at the time. The 23rd STS is already there, so they're yeah. already set up. Got guys on teams, um, and uh, Captain Bullard is the stow that's there. He's the the CCT guy. Yeah. And 
So Stamey's leading the whole thing. We got Griff, we got me, we got Haytack, we got Beef, we got Tomop, we got Karen. And so we're we're trying to we're trying to figure out where it's at. And uh, we know now that we have to have somebody into the in the talk, you know, so into this, the op set. And I'm like, well, I I don't want to go. I want to go on the team, you know. Right, right. But Stamey's like, hey, just go in and sit in there for a little bit, and then uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll. No, that's not what Stamey did. Stamey <laughs> sent me in there. Stamey <laughs> sent me in there, and then Tim goes on the team, and I'm like, I'm stuck into the op yeah. I'm like, all right, here we go. Yeah. So I'm in there, and I meet. Um, you know, I, I walk in, there's me, Beave, Griff, and Haytack, and Brian and Tomat and and uh, Stamey, and I can't remember who else was there. There's a couple other guys there. Anyway, those guys are all going on teams, and I'm like, I'm, it's like, okay, I'm just going to make the best of it. I just got to yeah. do what I got to do, you know? So Colonel Mulholland comes in, and, and we're doing the morning briefs. You know, he has a morning brief and has a evening brief uh, of what's going on. And we haven't got anybody down, you know, none of our guys are down range yet, you know? And Mm -hmm. so none of the teams are down range yet. And we're getting ready to get guys on down range and um, we have no officers. So it's Griff and I, Griff's like, Hey, you want to work? You want to work nighttime or you want to, you know, want to work daytime and Griff's like, I'll work night. Because nobody was fighting during the night. So Griff wanted to work night where it's just, it's just <laughs> nothing going on at night. And so uh, I was working the day. And um, before we got any guys down, Colonel Mulholland brought us in, told us what to expect. Hey, this is what we're doing. This is what to expect. You know, so let's, let's you know, make sure you clear everything through me. Right. All right, cool. He's got another colonel from the 10th group that came in, was the D.O., and, uh, you know, I'm, I, I like a guy, I'm a guy that likes to work out. So I'm looking for a gym. I'm looking for a gym, you right. know, and the guy's like, Colonel's like, he's like, rock, come with me. So it's like, okay. So I come out with him, we walk out and there's old bunkers Yeah. and we walk in this bunker and there's a, a weight room. Somebody had brought the weights and it was a weight room. Oh, he goes, yeah. And he's like, look what we got. And I was like, get out of here. I was like, this is what I'm talking about. You know? So right. he, but he goes, just me and you know about this. He goes, can't tell a lot of people. And I was like, cool. I'm good. Yeah, with that. No worries. <laughs> no worries. So we're working out. And uh, so now we're getting guys on the team and I'm trying to work with bull to Kent Buller to get guys on teams. But mm-hmm. You know, the animosity, the headbutting we had with the CCT guys and stuff. So I'm trying to be the mediator. Yeah. And um, so one of the teams going in was the team that was on 12 strong, you know. So they they wanted guys on the team. They they put – well, they put guys out there. They put teams down on down range. Mm-hmm. And they give guys uh, equipment that they've never used before. Yeah. You know, so we get GPSs. We get – all this equipment, they're bringing in new bombs, you know, the JDAMs are coming in and all these new bombs and nobody knows how to use them, but they're like, right. here, you know, this is the, the military's chance to, to use these smart bombs. And they weren't even close to hitting anybody. And, and Colonel Mahalan didn't want to put JTACs on the team because he didn't want to put anybody in harm's way that he didn't have to. Oh, right, right. You know, you know what I'm saying? So he's like, <clears throat> finally, he's like, dude, we got to get guys on these teams. Because they, these guys aren't dropping the bombs, aren't hitting the targets. Sure. And we're wasting millions of dollars, you know. I mean, he's getting phone calls from, I don't know if it's CENTAF or it's from, you know I mean, because this is a hip, a hip plan. And uh, Colonel Mulholland was sometimes talking directly to the Joint Chief of Staff. And I, I, I you know, I don't mean to, to, to brag about it or anything like that, but there, there was no plan for this. This was just like, right. road up, let's go. We got these guys in place. Let's, you know, we're going to do this. Yeah, it had to be yeah. a quick response. Yeah. There wasn't a whole yeah. lot of backside planning for it. You know, you had to get yeah. over there and do it quick. Yeah. Nothing. And I was trying to figure out how to get radio frequencies and we got satellite frequencies started happening. You know, this was when it first came out. And they wouldn't give us a 25 watt channel and they would always give us five watt, but you can't talk at the time. You couldn't talk real good with that. And we're trying, we need this channel. Yeah. And then I was talking to the guys at Centa, uh, CENCOM. And there was no nobody there that I could talk to that could relate to it. Yeah. And then uh, Ed Shulman finally got there. 
Nice. So when Ed got to CENTCOM, now we're now he's making things happen. So Ed oh, yeah. was making things happen, and we got our frequencies and everything we needed. And uh, so we're getting guys on. We're getting ready to send the guys down there. You know the the, the twelve strong team. You know, and we're yeah. starting to get those guys together. And Tomat and Linehart, who's a CCT guy, they get on the team. Well, we had a weather weather guy, weather captain. And so he would come in, give us the weather every morning, you know? Yeah. Hey, we're going to be able to go tonight. Weather's perfect. We're going to go tonight. And weather was shit that night. Like, it was just <laughs> bad. So he comes in the next day. The next day, he's like, hey, we're good to go tonight. But he looks like crap. Like, his uniform, like, just got out of the – like, he didn't even put it in the dryer. All right. So was giving him – you know, the colonel told him, Captain, you got to be a little bit more presentable. I know we're in war, but you got to be a little bit – so he comes in the next day, now his uniform squared away. And we're all the edge of our seat, you know, and he briefs up, weather's good tonight. Nope, no go again. <laughs> so the next day he comes walking in and we're laughing. We're laughing our asses off, you know, because we're like, yeah. yeah, hey, weather's good. Weather's good, you know, and he's got his head down. And, you know, because <laughs> we're getting ready. We want to go in there and start dealing death, you know. And so sure, sure. he comes in and he's like, Weather's good tonight. We're like, yeah. Everybody's saying, like, yeah, 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 it is. It's going to be good. Nope. Crap again. Comes Jeez. back out. Comes back in. So the fourth day, finally, he comes in. He's just like, All right, I'm going to tell you again, the weather's good. You know, he was like, he was done with it because everybody was making fun of him, you know, when he was All right, right. Out. <laughs> and finally, the weather was good and we got the guys downrange. So we get the guys downrange, start putting guys on teams. Stamey gets on his team. Everybody's on the team, you know. Uh, myself and uh, I think Beeve are working the day. Haytack and Griff are working nights. And I mean, it's, you know, K2 starting to build up a little bit. We're getting guys coming in, you know, and uh, Span's coming in, Zach's coming okay. in. So we got Zachary and those guys coming in. And uh, still no officer yet. And uh, so I'm making decisions on guy on things that I, that make me really nervous, you know? So sure. I'm like, I like, I'm like, dude, I'm a, I'm a tech sergeant. I, you know, Colonel Mulholland's sitting with us for the first two, two days of the battle. Cause he wants to make sure we know what they're doing. Yeah. And the only cell in the whole option that was working after the morning brief was the fire cell. And that was us. That was, it was it. Everybody else was leaving, oh, you know? And so Colonel Mulholland's sitting there with us for two days. And then after, after the second, day he looks at me he goes rock you got it he goes you need anything i gotta go back and we're gonna plan so colonel mahalan gets up walks away and i was like I'm like all right this is it like and you know you don't know the outside world you just know sure. your little world right here that's happening right and so i'm i got i have a i have one of you know those green books yeah like the green air force little uh notebooks yep, with yep. the hard covers i got one of those that's got all the air coming off the, the ships. Like we had two ships, F-14s, F-18s coming off the ships. That's all we had. We had two aircraft carriers out there. They flew like 30 days straight, nonstop. And um, one time this team calls up and they didn't have um, a JTAC with them. So I'm controlling the air. And I said, yeah. the only thing we got on, on, on station right now is a bomber. I said, I need your location. Give me what the target is. And I'll build a nine line. So I'm in the opsen building this nine line. He's telling me it's in a village. And so the ROE is very broad. You know, sure. so we, we have very broad ROE. And I hear the guy's, uh, I hear the guy's voice. And he's like, he, you could tell panic mode setting in because they're getting yeah. shelled and, and everything. So I'm like, all right, dude, this is, I got a B-52 bringing the bomber in. And I ain't got time to go back and brief Colonel Mulholland because these guys are getting shot at, you know? Right. And so I said, okay, get your heads down. b 52s on its way. I cleared him hot. I said, just call me back when you're when it's done. And he goes, all right. And I don't hear nothing for like 10 minutes. And I'm like, because I can't see anything, you know? Right. And I'm like, I, I don't know if I could, if what happened. And he calls me back. He goes, hey, we're good. Everything's good. Nice. And I was like, awesome. And <laughs> so now I got to get up because I just bombed a village. So civilians, you know, all this other stuff. So I walk, okay. 
knock on Colonel Mahone's little door, makeshift door he had. And I come in and I go, sir, I said, I got, I got, he goes, what's going on, Rock? I said, I got it. I got some stuff. I said, we just had a team that was under fire. I said, I brought a B-52 B in, dropped down a village. And I said, the Jags are going to come and talk to me. And I said, I, I, I'm in trouble. And he looks at me, he goes, Rock, are the guys okay? And I said, yeah, they're fine. They're going to get you BDA after they get in there and do this. This is, you know, the, the, the clearing yes. and everything. Yep. And he, yeah, yeah. And he's looking at me and he's like, guys are okay? And I said, yeah. He goes, I got the Jag. And I was like, awesome. And I went back and sat down. And um, about two hours later, the Jag comes up at me and he was major and he puts his arm around me. He goes, Sir Davis, I heard we bombed the village. And I was like, yes, sir. The guys are okay. And I was like, yep. He's like, cool, walks away. And I was yeah. like, Whew. like, you know. <laughs> and then Cubic shows up. Andy shows up. Andy was in yeah. the was with the 23rd. He went over with CCT guy. So I got Andy squared away. And then um, you know, Span's cousin was one of the, a CIA guy. Yeah. And those, the CIA guys came in and they were asking me, they said, Hey, you know, we got to go down. How do we do casts? And I was, I gave him a quick rundown of casts. And that's when all that stuff happened in Mazar Sharif. Yeah. yeah. Uh, up there in Mazar Sharif. And um, after Tomat and Leinhardt's team made it through there. And so, yeah. uh, but they had to make it through that gap to get up there. And uh, so I briefed them up on casts and stuff and got them guys in. And then Tomat and those guys are moving. And as they're moving into Mazar, going through the gap there, um, we only had one set of F-18s because all the other, the ships had to, they're flying 30 days straight. So they had to right. lock it. They had to stop, you know? And um, so they stopped and uh, we only had one set that day when they were running split team ops. And I, I was like, like, dude, you got to split the aircraft up. I said, I can't, I don't have any more aircraft for you. I have nothing. Yeah. The bombers coming out of, you know, Diego Garcia weren't going to make it. You know, they weren't going to – we had nothing. Right. And um, so uh, they were using what they could with those guys, and they finally met up and got everything together, and then they were going to go through the gap, and th then I had some B-52s check on. Nice. Well, Bull, or, Bull comes up to me, and he's like, Brock, let's drop a Moab in the gap. <laughs> and I was like, awesome, let's, let's do this. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like game one. So we send the request. Uh, Bull's like, Bull's like, yeah, let's do this. I was like, awesome. And so we send it up, request a Moab to drop into that gap, you know, where all the bad guys are at. Yeah. And he's like, uh, they're like, no, nope, denied, because that's an inhumane weapon. You know, it's it's inhumane to do that. I'm like, Is you know, it? Bull and I was like, yeah. I was like, come on. But you know what they give us? Two fully loaded B-52s. I mean, what's, what's I'm like, the difference? Dude, it's the same amount, of, you know, the same amount. I'm like, why can't, yeah. why isn't this working, you know? And so anyway, we just ended up dropping two B-52s through the gap, and those guys pushed all the way up into Mazar Sharif, which yeah. is the only place Dustin wanted to get to because he didn't really care about anything else. That was his yeah. territory. And then uh, by that time, it was uh, around Thanksgiving, and uh, of November of 2001. And then um, the AC-130s finally got in the country. Oh, nice. So it was nice. They flew in that that night on Thanksgiving. And uh, they flew three. They had three aircraft that landed there. One of them was broke, so we had two available. Mm -hmm. So they were going to send uh, Stamey and them guys and, and uh, Tomat and them were working the Condus area. Mm -hmm. And Brian and Karen and those guys were up in Mazar Sharif. And... That was the hot spot at the time. And so they needed LNOs on the on the birds. So I was like, uh, I volunteered to go, you know. Nice. And I was like, I'll go. And <laughs> Bull's like, Yep, I'm going. I was like, Well, I'm going to Mazar Sharif. And he's like, No. <laughs> and he did the old captain, yeah, you yeah. know, officer captain. He flipped so for it. Like, flipped for it. Yeah. So I was like, Cool. So I got on the bird to Condus and I'm walking out to the bird and I go to get on the bird and the fires uh, guy that was on the plane on the 130 was a major, and it was Sully that was at the Ranger Battalion. He was oh, really? Alien. Yeah, he gets back on the Nick plane. Sully. I was like, Sully. He's like, Rock, what are you doing? I was like, 
He's like, Brock, you're sitting next to me. So I sat next to him on the plane. Oh, that's so awesome. I, it was awesome. So I had to explain to him where everybody was at. So I, I gave him the whole battlefield as we took off. They're tweaking the guns uh, in the side of a mountain. You know, it's like 10-minute yeah, yeah. 10 10 minute combat tweaking of the guns. We fly into Condus, and uh, we I get an idea of where the where our guys are at. I'm talking to Tom out on the ground in Linehart. So they're back here and, you know, they're, they're away from the bad guys. We see tanks, we see all kinds of, you know, uh, Taliban all, and we just start shelling them. Like we're just, you know, I got video of, of, of our mission that night and and it's just start shelling them and uh, chase them around. And then we go and we, we hit some, we hit the the main effort and then we go back, start hitting the tanks with one of fives, which isn't going to do anything. You know, it's just going to, knock the track off or whatever. And as we're scanning, I look and I see two BM-21s with two ammo trucks next to it. And then the crane to load the missiles into the, you know, into the to BM-21s. Yeah. I tell Sully, I said, Sully, those are BM-21s. And he's like, you sure? And I was like, we need to hit those because that's, those are going to hit our guys before the tanks will. Right. And Sully's like, you sure about that? And I was like, yeah. And the only reason I knew there were BM-21s is because I looked at those. You remember those cards we had? Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that's the <laughs> only reason, dude, that I knew that they were. I was like, but I looked smart at the time. I was like, yeah, I'm smart, man. I got I'm smart. <laughs> right. And uh, I was like, wow, these things really work. You know, these yeah, right. cards really work. <laughs> <laughs> and so I start laughing. And I was like, I laughed to myself. And so we ended up uh, hooked on them. And we started hitting them. And we blew up one of the ammo trucks, which blew up everything else. And it, oh, they had to pan back and they were like, rock, that's a good, awesome target. Like, cause it, they had to pan back and white it out the screen on the, yeah, on the yeah, yeah. And <laughs> so we started working and, um, so we're done, we're done doing that. And we flew back, landed and, uh, bull gets off his plane and I get off my plane. I said, bull, did you drop anything? He's like, nah. I was like, yeah, dude. See? <laughs> See? I was like, yeah, buddy. I said, we got a bunch of done it. We got a bunch of dunnage if you want some souvenirs. It's on our plane, you know. <laughs> and so he went over there and we got some stuff. But um, that was the first night that I saw the AC-130 completely blacked out in the back with nothing. And these guys were loading. And it was it was amazing. It was yeah. phenomenal. And yeah. So we debriefed, went to bed, and then I flew a couple more missions. And I was on the mission that night that Price and and uh, Yoshida and Haytack were on the ground. Oh yeah. And Yosh was controlling us that night. We had uh, we were in outside uh, Kandahar, okay. and that's when the they had the bombing. You know, when the bomb hit the hit the guys up there. Right. And I I just got back off the mission. Yoshida was controlling us, the F-18s, and a P-3. Landed, debriefed, crashed out for two hours, got up, and then came in, and that's when all hell was breaking loose in the in the ops end. And uh, so we got all that squared away, and and uh, Haytech got Haytech and Yoshida got out because Yoshida had his shoulder blown off and or messed up. Uh, right. I think Haytech had a couple had a broken leg, and so we got those guys out. And um, but we had four objectives we were supposed to hit. That, mm-hmm. that initial push, it was Kab, Kabul, Kandus, uh, Kandahar, and Mazar Sharif. Those, they expected it to take a year and we finished it in three months. Nice. And it was, it was, it was very, you know, I had General Franks come through, sit with me, you know, he sat down with me and was talking to me and, you know, and, but we were the only guys in the ops in the whole time. It was just, wow. just us, you know, there was nobody in there. And so we redeploy back. And we're we're getting we get on the one thirty, and that's when um, what's his name, the guy that uh, the American Taliban. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I he mean, gets yeah he gets picked up in Mazar Sharif. Tomat's on the bird with him. They don't put him in a seat. You know, it's he's on the one thirty coming back because they're going to take him back to the states to prosecute right. him. You know, and he's not in a seat. They ratchet strapped him to the floor. <laughs> and it's it's sixteen thousand feet, and it's it's cold on the floor, you know. Oh yeah, because it's it's you know in, end of November, December time frame. 
Oh, it had to be miserable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he's ratchet strapped to the floor. And um, so I go out and meet him at the plane. They pick him up, move him to the other plane. Tomat gets off. And so we're, we're you know, I've given Tomat – showing where everything's at, getting him all squared away because, you know, he hadn't had a decent meal and stuff. So right. we're all chatting. And so it's the end of December. Christmas goes by, beginning in January. And they said, now we get – we had an officer come in. We had Colonel Beauchene came in. So we had all these guys in there, and, and it was starting to build up. And it was amazing how K2 has gotten yeah. developed. And they're going to start um, – and we started – just started moving into Bagram. And so we all started pressing the Bagram and uh, we're going to leave out of Bagram. And um, so we all got into Bagram, set up Bagram and um, we're all loading up on the planes to leave. And, and we leave and we go fly from there to Turkey and we land in Turkey and it's Tomat, Griff, Beave. I um, can't remember who else is on the plane. I think Brian's on the plane. Griff, we're all we're all in in Turkey in the in the in the pack shed there, waiting to get on the next bird out. Yeah, and, you know we're all sitting in our own little areas because we've been with each other for four months. We don't want to sit near each other, you know. <laughs> right. And I, I look up at the TV, and it's CNN's on, and they're showing all the stuff that's going on in Afghanistan. Yeah, and you don't realize the impact you had that the whole world was watching. And I'm looking at stuff they're talking about and I'm like that, we already did that. That's like a week ago, you know? Yeah. And you're looking at it and I'm like, you know, I'm taken back because I'm like, this is, this is, you know, you're just doing your job. You, right. You're not, you, that's all you're doing. You're, you're just doing your job, you know? And then, you know, Colonel Mulholland gave us, you know, he called me in his office one time, you know, when, when we were there in Afghanistan and uh, Uzbekistan and, He's like, all right, Rock, I know you guys are going to be leaving pretty soon. We got everything squared away. He goes, but he's holding the phone like this. He goes, hey, I got somebody on the phone I need you to talk to. And I was like, well, well I said, sir, what, what is it? You know, I said, who, who is it? He's like, I want to do this, this, and this. And I said, well, you can't because of this, this, and this. And he goes, all right, tell him. I'm like, no, sir. He said, Rock, tell him. So I get on the phone. I'm talking to the guy. I get done about I tell him what I, what I told Colonel Mahal. It was done in like 10 minutes. And he gets on the phone. He goes, Roger that. He's talking to him, blah, blah, blah. And he hangs the phone up. And I goes, I go, he looks at me and goes, thanks, Rock. What you did would have taken me half an hour to tell him. He goes, I appreciate <laughs> it. I look at him. I said, so I don't want to know who it is. I said, but can I just speak to you? He goes, yeah, it's just talk to me, Rock. And I said, I'm glad you have that much faith in me. I said, I really appreciate it. But I looked at him and said, don't ever, ever. <laughs> do that to me again. I said, <laughs> don't ever do that to me again. I said, I don't know if he was talking to CENTCOM, Joint Chief of Staff. I don't know. And I just walked out. And oh, man, I want to know who it is. I want to yeah, know I don't who know. I, don't, I have no idea. The president. I don't know who it was at the time. But it was either CENTCOM or the Joint Chief of Staff because he had direct contact with those guys. So I don't I don't know who it was. He just and put you on the spot. Put yeah, me on the spot. Guys. But uh, but you so nailed it. Laugh. I mean, you nailed it. I don't know. I, 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 I don't think I nailed it, but I was just heart was pounding. I said a couple expletives to the colonel, you know, as I walked out. Right. He laughed at me, <laughs> and uh, so we left there and um, uh, debriefed with the CCT guys with the twenty third, you know, and they they asked me, Major Johnson at the time asked me, Rock, you know, I'm glad we we're here. I'm glad we worked together. We're just trying to build the rapport, you know, build sure. the rapport with the guys. Get back. Go to JRTC with 7th Group two weeks later after I get back. And so uh, by this time, I found out that I was going to have my boy. Nice. So I wanted, wanted to redeploy again, you know, because she was pregnant. I was like, hey, I want to get out of here. You know, let me go back. You know, so <laughs> right. I head back to Afghanistan and I went to Lawara. And then that's when um, uh, I said, I'm not going to the op send this time. I said, right. I'm going. I redeployed in March right after Anaconda, right tail end of Anaconda. I get there. I said, I'm going, I'm going down range. I'm not going in the opposite again. I said, I got, and I'm sitting back there. So I get to Lawara and it's Griff and I, we got two teams. We got a third group team and a uh, 19th group team. Okay. And so 
we're hanging out there and uh, we've got a slice of uh, the 82nd pulling security for us and uh, on our little fire base. And uh, we're going out doing missions with those guys and we're right on the Pakistan border. I mean, I can look and see Pakistan. Sure. And so we're right on the border and we're going out doing missions, getting intel, gathering intel, little firefights here and there, nothing major. And then one morning, all of a sudden we hear an explosion. Like, you know, I jump up because I'm like, okay, this is, we're going, it's going down. Yeah. And what they did was they set up 122, 120 millimeter rounds over on the other side in Pakistan and sent them up on timers and was aiming them at our compound. We had the, we had other government agencies there and stuff and they were out, you know, they were filling us, giving us intel and stuff. And, um, Griff ended up redeploying back to Kandahar and I stayed there was with the two teams. So I was going out all the time with, yeah. the, with the teams. And, um, so that started being a daily thing. It was getting just shot at every day, had to relocate our, our ammo storage because it was in the front. It was facing Pakistan, which not a good idea. <laughs> right. If they had hit that, it would have blown up the whole hillside, you know, <laughs> so moved it to the back. We had our Afghani counterparts were working with us. And um, so we're out doing all that stuff, getting in some firefights here and there. And then, uh, yeah, setting up DZs. Like, I never set up a DZ before, you know, but I'm right. my, using my Pathfinder skills. I go out, set up a DZ. They drop in our equi- our supplies in, you know, and resupply. Yeah. And then uh, um, we, we go out on missions, end up finding out one of the guys was working both sides, you know. And he, he ended up we, – we captured him. And – a lot of stuff went down. We captured him. I've never carjacked before, but we <laughs> carjacked his car. And so nice. I got to drive that, his little truck around, you know, <laughs> and uh, we sent him back and come to find out he was, uh, he was one of the higher ups and he ended up in Guantanamo. Didn't really. Yeah. Didn't even know wow. it. Didn't, uh, didn't even know it. And, uh, but he was getting paid on both sides. So he was, he was given information whenever he, whenever he could, but Sure. The other guys that were the other government agencies that were with us ended up sending him to Guantanamo. Yeah. And then um so we're we're you know, we're going on different missions. I run into um Andy and uh, I ran, run into Andy Anderson or um not Andy Anderson. He was up at the two four. I ran into him out there, I ran into some other guys, and we ended up getting little firefights here. Cornelius here. Cornelius ran into okay. Andy out there. And Andy was broken down, so we went out and helped him out. And it was good to chat with other guys because, they, you know, you don't see too many. No. Nah. Not in the middle of the desert, you know. You don't see too many guys uh, out there. Yeah. And uh, I was set up our own little makeshift gym out there. <laughs> and uh, so the first time I had a control cast, we were we were getting fired from Pakistan. And um, we moved in, into location, and I'm on, the, I'm on the radio. We bring in, and there's some... Uh, First ones I get are a set of uh, F-18s, Marine nice. F-18s. So I'm like, cool. I, you know, we were we were out there, so they knew where we we're at, you know. So sure. I said, we got to bomb the hill. I'm getting the guy to run in, this Marine, and he's coming right at us, you know. And I'm like, I'm like, that's not good. I'm gonna board it. I boarded him. I said, dude, I'm gonna pop purple smoke, and this is us because everybody knew where we we're at. It's not like sure. we're hiding. So yeah. I pop purple smoke. I said, the purple smoke is us. And he's like, okay. So he comes back around and he's like, and the guys, SF guys, yelling, like, come on, rock, hit the hill, hit the hill. You know, I'm like, I'm, I'm right. getting there. I'm yelling at him, I'm getting there. <laughs> and so the guy comes around, he says, hey, you want bombs or you want rockets? I said, nah, give me a rocket. I, I don't yeah. want, I don't want bombs. I'm not, I'm not feeling good about this yet. If the rocket hits in the right spot, we'll, we'll bring the bombs. Sure. So he, I'm looking at him, he's a little bit facing us again. I'm like, but he looks good. I'm like, I'm going to clear him. So I cleared him hot and the rocket landed about 200 meters from us. Oh my God. And I'm like, I'm like, all right, dude, this, this is not working out. He's like, well, I got an RTB and go to the tanker. And I was like, cool. Yeah. So he left. <laughs> so the next guys that show up are Mirage 2000 French guys. I, if I can't get F-18s on there, I'm never right. going to get these French guys on there, you know? So I'm like, right. the, the language barrier, I'm just like, 
oh my gosh, just leave, just leave. And you know, <laughs> yeah. and I'm trying to talk them on. It's going, and they're like, Rock, come on, come on. They're yelling at me. We're getting sh- shot at. And finally they left. And I called and A10s checked on. I said, Thank goodness. So A10s check on. Dude, it was done in 10 minutes. The whole battle yeah. was done in 10 minutes. Got their eyes on, boom, took care of them, threw some guns up there, you know, 30 millimeter on the hillside. It was all over with. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I was like, oh, thank God. And so <laughs> they left. But I under, then I realized how hard it was going to be to talk to uh, Allied Aircraft that they checked on. So I got I had to figure out a way. So I started working, you know, in the thing on trying to how to figure out how to set it up. And uh so anyway, we went we went over to Gardez and the commander had flown in, the third group commander. And so I went and picked him up. They made me ride with, they made me drive him back to the, to the base. So we get back to the base and he's asking me on the way there, Rock, how are the guys doing? I said, they're good, sir. I said, busy. I said, a lot of busy. I said, if we miss a supply drop, we're out of water for a few days, you know? So mm. I said, it's rough. And so we get there and um, he says, all right, Rock, I want you to get all the guys in line. I'm going to give them their combat infantry badges and the combat medical badges, you know, so get all the guys, tell them to get out here, tell the captain, to get them in line so I can give these out, these awards out. So we get them all in line out there and I'm standing in the back, you know, and the colonel's giving him the hoo speech and the pat on yeah. the back. And uh, he starts handing all the medals out and stands back up, continuing the hoo speech. And he looks back at me and he's like, Rock, what are you doing? You know, I was like, I was like, I'm not sleeping. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm right here. And he's like, he's like, Rock, why aren't you in line? I said, Sir, I said, I can't, I can't get in line. I said, That's 11 series, 18 series metal. I said, I'm not 11 series or 18 series. He said, Rock, how many missions you been on? I said, All of them. He goes, Get in line. So he, <laughs> he gave me one, but I never wore it. Or, yeah, you know, because you know, it's just that's a, cool though. It's cool that it's he included cool. you. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, and so. We're getting ready. We're, you know, I'm, missions go by. We, some stuff I didn't, you know, I didn't, stuff I plead the fifth on, I walked away from because I didn't want to see some stuff, you know, so I, I walked away. Some stuff, other stuff went down, but getting ready to, to it's October now, I'm getting ready to leave. And um, he says, uh, getting ready to leave. And um, they said, we've got a mission coming up. So I said, okay, I'm going back to Bagram. Give me all this stuff. I'll walk into the A-10 squadron, brief them guys up, and I'll leave. And um, Deaver's going to replace me in Lawara. So nice. Deaver comes in, and I get to back to Bagram. Deaver's there. I give Deaver the brief. We walk over to the A-10 squadron, brief the A-10 guys up. Don't burn the target. This is what he's doing. And I'm leaving in two hours, but I'm briefing these guys up on this mission. Yeah, yeah. So I get all my stuff together, redeploy back. My son was born uh, that October. I got back okay. in September, so he's born in October. And we're all, you know, now the rumor mill's coming around. Hey, Iraq's going to break out. Iraq's going to break out. You know, so I'm like listening, hearing it all. Griff and I, all, we're all, we're all doing our thing back at the at the groups now. And uh, well, Colonel Mulholland calls up Colonel Longoria at the 18th ASOC, and he's like, "I want, I need Griffin Rock." to come with us, you know? Jeez. And so he calls up the 22nd. He calls up us over there and he says, hey, or the, the DO calls us up. He goes, hey, Colonel Longoria wants to meet with you guys. You need all of you, you get everybody up here right now. So we get up there and we're all in the in the conference room or in the auditorium and it's just, you know, it's about 12 of us. Yeah. And Colonel Longoria looks at me and Griff and he's like, all right, which one of you guys called Colonel Mulholland? <laughs> and we're like, what are, you, what are you talking about? He's like, what what you guys call Colonel Mulholland? I was like, we well, didn't. He goes, listen, I run this group. I run where, you know, he's given us the whole, I'm in charge. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> and we're like, cool. We're like, we, we understand that. We're like, we, we get it, sir. And he's yeah. like, uh, he's like, well, he called because Iraq's breaking out and they're going to go and they want, you know, Rock, they want you and you and Griff to go. And he goes, but I decide where we're going, you know, and he's giving us, you know, he's telling right. us, I decide where we're going. I'm like, cool. And so he gets done and we're like, all right, are we going? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, like, oh yeah, are you heading out or what are we going? Yeah, so and so, so he ended up going and we deployed into Ali Asaleem. And uh, so Pete Klein's there, Paul Britton, 
all the guys, Hoffman and all of us are there. And we, but we deployed to Fort Campbell, left with them for Fort Campbell, beat the 23rd there this time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had some SEALs there at Ali Asalim, Colonel Mulholland. I was working uh, 3rd Battalion, and uh, uh, Pete was with 2nd Battalion. Um, Knipe was with the 10th Group guys, and then up north, and then we had a slice of our guys, 1st Battalion, coming out of the out of the west, you know. Mm-hmm. So we're getting ready to invade, and um, that's when the Fort Stewart guys rolled all the way up into Iraq. Yeah, defeated our my third battalion. We had no job then. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was done because they 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 messed that one up. Yeah. <laughs> so so we had no job. So we ended up um, getting ready to to move into Biop, and you know when all the war was starting to happen, everything was going down, and uh, so we move into uh, into Biop. Well, I have this young captain with me, and he's a. We finally get an officer over. We ask for an officer, and they give us a captain. He's a B-52 nav, and good guy. Don't get me wrong. He's a good guy, but he's not, you know. He's Maybe not as experienced as you needed yeah, on the ground, yeah, on the yeah, ground yeah. side. If you, yeah, yeah, if you want to say that. <laughs> and I told him one, t- one time not to mess with the radios because I was doing a crypto change. I said, when I come back, show you how to do the crypto change. I'm going to go to Chow. Yeah. And so when I come back, the, the battle captain looks at me and goes, Rock, I told him not to touch radios. And he messed with the radios and everything was, I couldn't communicate with anybody. Oh, my God. And I was like, looked at him and I yelled at I kind of yelled at him, you know, but I said, yeah, yeah. I was calm. I fixed the radios, you know. <laughs> and uh, so it was all good. And we ended up going uh, into Biap. We got that uh, palace south of Biap. Okay. So we moved into that palace and, uh, it was very, very surreal when we went in there and got third group all set up there. And uh, our, our battalion was there. And it's really surreal because you walk into that palace and it's, you know, this is Saddam's palace, you know, and we're, we're in it, you know, one of his palaces. And yeah, I got to pick my own room. I went up like on the third floor and there was a hole in the wall where a bomb had hit it. And so I was just like, there's a nice breeze coming through. There was a couch. I was like, yeah, this is mine. I'll take this one. <laughs> Cause of a breeze coming through. I was like, yeah, I love yeah. it. you know, so I took this one and we got it all. I got the op send set up down there and, um, landed it, you know, had guys coming in and I was sitting outside one time and I see this vehicle roll up to the top of the hill and it's Crosby. It's Travis Oh yeah, in the attack P vehicle. And he comes up and he's like, I was like, Hey, air force. And that's the first time I met Travis. He comes over, he goes, Hey, what's going on? I was like, He's like, how do you like the place? I said, I like it. He goes, yeah, we already been here. Like, you know, I was like, because he was the first one to roll up there. I was like, cool. He's like, uh, he's like, got anything to trade? I was like, no, dude. I said, I've been stuck at this palace. I said, I got nothing to trade. He goes, yeah. he goes, well, you got a couple glasses? I said, yeah. So we sat out, got a couple Cokes. He had some alcohol that he had gotten from somewhere. I don't know where. And we sat out there, had a few drinks and, nice, you know, just – talked and stuff. He was telling me how it was when he went into, when they invaded, went into uh, Baghdad and stuff. And yeah, he did some good know. stuff, didn't he? I mean, I did, oh, I didn't he, he get did. a silver star? Oh yeah. 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 He said, yeah, yeah. he said, he said it story. was, it was brutal. He said, he just went in there and they would hide stuff under bridges because they knew that the air force wouldn't like they had crotels underneath bridges and stuff and then pull them out and then pull them back in. He was, you know, he said a couple times he was, Resulted nine millimeter. I mean, he's got some good stories. You know, Travis does. Yeah. But um, so we was there f- till I think October. October again, and uh, we're getting ready to redeploy. And and you know, I ran into a guy there that was on the AC one thirty. That was LNO, and I ran into him, and he's like, "Rock, I knew you'd be here." And I said, I said, yeah, I said, good to see you, sir. He goes, man, you did a lot of good work when we were in Afghanistan in 01. He goes, I got something for you. Dude, he walks over, opens his bag, pulls out an air medal with my name on it. What? And I was like, I look at him. I said, he's like, Rock, he goes, I knew you'd be here. Brought this for you. And I was like, I was like, wow. I was like, what's it for? He goes, that mission that you did in Condus, he goes, Everybody on the plane got air metal and the two guys got distinguished flying crosses. The two, the two guys that no were flying way. the plane. Yeah. And I was like, get out of here. And he's <laughs> like, 
He's like, Rock, you want me to take it to Colonel Williams, who is the battalion commander? He goes, he'll hand it to you. I was like, no, no, no. We don't need a, we don't need a big spiel yeah, about it and everything. I said, I don't need it. I said, I don't need the pomp and circumstances for that. I said, I'm good. Yeah. So he gave me my, uh, gave me my medal and, and I was shocked, you know, that, that he, even, he brought it with him. That's there. crazy. That was, that I mean, that's a different, different country, different conflict, everything, you know, whole, all of it. He just, Amazing. I knew you'd be there. And so, uh, wonder how long he's been we, carrying that thing around, you know? I like, know. Right. <laughs> right. I was like, like, sir, how you, like, and it's not like, like I could see if he just typed it up, you know what sure. I'm saying? Like if he just typed it up right there. It already had my name, had the date and everything already signed. That's awesome. What a great, so, man, that's awesome. Yeah. So I left there and we came back. I had uh, go back in 04, and I'm on the SIF team now at a third group. Yeah. So now we're all doing DA missions and stuff. So now this is my best trip because this was so much fun. Like we were oh my God, yeah. back in BIAP. We were, we were going out. We had ICTF guys with us, and uh, we are training Iraqi guys, fast roped on the, on the targets. I mean, it was this mission. We went everywhere. Yeah. Uh, Karbala. On Ajaf, on Azaria, border of Syria and Al Qaim, uh, you know, we were all over the place, Fallujah, and we were just doing direct DA missions. And I had nothing but AC 130s. And I mean, we were knocking in doors. Uh, Karbala, we had a had a 24 hour firefight, or yeah, close to 24 hour firefight in Karbala. And it was just like you go and, you, you know, I'm controlling the AC 130. And as we're going in, we're back of a Bradley, which I'm not happy about. So I'm sitting right. back of a Bradley because I'm locked in. <laughs> and the AC-130 is calling targets out as we're moving. And I'm getting the okay because I'm with the captain. And sure. he said, yeah, kill him. You know, so shoot him. We get out at the 58s trying to come in with us to, to – I don't need the 58s. I got the AC-130 right now. <laughs> right, right? Right. I don't want you guys put coming in. The AC-130 is shelling, you know. Um, and so – uh, he's getting ready to leave, and uh, we're going from house to house. We found out that the that the bad guys in Iraq would put caches in different houses along the way. Then they would pull a weapon out, shoot it, drop it, go to the next house, pull it out, oh, shoot okay. it, drop it, and move to the next house. And so we're we're pushing through. And, you know, I, I can do CQB. Like, we were training CQB, but I'm an Air Force guy. Right. And these guys are going super fast. And I'm with a Navy – EOD guy, this lieutenant, you know, so I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm not, I'm going to be at the back of the line. Sure. And they'll clear the, they'll clear the house and we'll just go to the roof, you know, and I'll start controlling from the roof, you know, yeah, yeah. because there's no way I'm going to move that fast as they do. And so we get in there and we move and then I'm standing there and I realized that I was in the building. I couldn't go on the roof because there was people firing at us. So I'm, I'm trying to, I have to lean out the door. So I'm at the front door and I lean out. There's a tank. Our tank's parked out in front. This M1's parked out in front of us. And he's, he's, remember that movie, um, Full Metal Jacket? Yeah. And at the end, they have all the fire and everything burning when they're going through that town. Yep, yep. This is exactly what it was. It looks exactly uh -huh. like that. And <laughs> so I'm leaning out the door, talking to AC 130. And about two blocks, about a block and a half down the road, I see this guy peeking around the corner with an RPG. And I'm, I'm going to pull my my weapon up because I'm like, I, I got to get the first shot off, you know, because sure. he's aiming in my direction. Well, he shoots it, but he's aiming at the tank. And he hits the commander in the tank. And I fell down on the floor because I thought he was coming at me. So I was going low to the ground. Right, right. And let it hit the door or whatever. But it hit the tank and it ended up, uh, the guy was really badly injured. They had to pull the the, the commander out of the tank and then they oh, took him and and took him away but i mean that was my first real like we were, we were in a serious firefight i mean we had pot shots everywhere else but sure, sure we basically dominated everything else when we we're wherever we went you know and um the one time we were in the in a, in a big compound and went in and um i went with combat carl we called him combat carl and, and <laughs> pete so we went with, i went and followed them chewy and the other team guys went to the right and uh, we're going in this compound, and I mean, we're just, they're just slaying dudes, you know. And to come around the corner, one guy in the middle of the compound, he's behind this little mound, and this guy wasn't going to give up. Like he's 
Like we threw grenades at him. He was like, he wasn't giving up. Yeah. And then he popped his head up and I shot and then, uh, combat Carl and Pete shot the commander and they all shot and, and obviously he's a captain. So he got the kill, you know, he wasn't, gonna, right. <laughs> yeah, you know, he wasn't gonna say anything. Sure. But we ended up getting out and we, we that battle was over and he, uh, we started, we had the ICDF guys pull the guys out. We had to, you know, do what we had to do to report everything. And um, yeah, so we ended up getting back. We went out to Al Qaim and was working the Syria border and then, uh, brought a bunch of guys back, interrogated a bunch of guys and working with the Marines in the Marine sector in labs. And so that was probably my best deployment. I, I had a lot of fun in that, you know? So when I was getting ready to leave, they said, Hey, we're going to give you a, uh, air force combination medal with a V. And I was like, cool, you know, I'm good with that. We'll leave. And, and, uh, I'm okay with that. I really, I wasn't there for the medals, you know, sure. I, I, yeah, I didn't really, care. I was just, the only thing my whole goal was deploying was to just do my job and not get anybody else killed, you know, right. And die. That was my whole goal. I didn't really Same. care about the medals. I didn't want it. I didn't want nothing. I didn't expect nothing. Just please do my job and do your, to have your job, do your job in the middle of chaos is amazing. Yeah. You know, cause it's so chaotic right. and to have that, I'm not a multitasker, but I was a multitasker then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you 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 adapt, and it was just to me, it was amazing how calm I was in a chaotic situation. And and if you could do that, that's why I try to tell the young guys now: you got to be calm in a chaotic situation because you're the only guy. You know, everybody else is in the chaos, and you're the guy right. that's in the chaos trying to remain calm to do other things. Right. So we get back and. Uh, ended up going up to the AT base sock because I got step promoted to master. And so nice. they said they, they stepped me because they said rock's not going to make master if he tests. So, <laughs> <we'll just, laughs> <step me. laughs> so they stepped me and I get up there to the 18th base sock and Mark Hurst, uh, Gannon, me, you know, Griff, Man. we're all up, we're all up in there. And so our whole goal was just to mess with Griff. Because <laughs> Griff, Griff's, Griff's got OCD, so we would move his stuff around on his desk. You know, we're at the 18 day sog, and and so we're doing the uh, 18 day sog stuff. And, and I was like, you know, it's time to they're gonna. I'm gonna PCS. I gotta. Mm -hmm. They're gonna make me PCS. So I saw on that Nellis came up as an instructor out at Nellis, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna put in that. I'm gonna go to Vegas. So I packed family up put in for Vegas, ended up going to Vegas, did a year at the 18th day SOG, went to Vegas and now I'm an instructor. Yeah. And I, I show up there and it was, uh, you know, it was just a good job. We were teaching young JTACs. I had, they were coming in, you know, different guys. We, I was the superintendent slash op soup, you know, because we didn't have a chief out there at the time. So I was right. I was a op soup first. And we had a superintendent and then I switched. Uh, so the op soup, I would make sure the guys doing everything, training, teaching the guys, going out to Irwin, doing air, coming back. And then um, uh, we would do a class. Then after the class, we would go jump. So by this time I was free fall nice. jump master. So we got, we uh, jump with the PJs. My goal is to set the guys up because, you know, you just teach them for a whole month. Now it's time to go out and have some fun, you know? Right. So we go out and we jump after that every, then we had like three slots there. So we go out and jump and everything and uh, come back, do another class, go jump and meet, you know, we got to meet all the guys and started rotating through the guys and uh, it was changing, went through different commanders and, and uh, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed yeah. te teaching, you know? And, um, uh, we started going TDY to different places like Valdosta and Missouri, Osage Beach and stuff, doing air, taking students there and uh, rebuilding the course, revamping the course. And I was getting, by this time, I was pushing 20 years, you know? Yeah. So I could make my decision what I want to do. And um, I had to go in and test for senior, my first time testing. So um, by this time, the superintendent, I'm doing superintendent, first sergeant, running um i'm doing i got two we got two uh jrtc and ntc units are falling underneath us oh, so okay. we're going 
you know, so we're going out and I'm doing all that stuff, you know, doing the superintendent stuff and, and talking to those guys, trying to get equipment and seeing what the big picture is. And now I've developed my hardest thing was transition from op operations back to training. Yeah. You know, because now I'm running in my head, I'm running operations, 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 you know, and I'm like, I'm like, I can't, it's, it's hard. Cause I want things done this way, you know, <laughs> right. Like everything was urgent, you know, like got to do it this way. And I don't care about big air force. I'm doing, you know, this is, but I'm at the big air force now. Right. So, so now I'm like, Oh, I got to do this. We got to do this. And I'm like, all right. They were telling me, Rocky had a throttle back. This isn't <laughs> operations anymore, you know, relax. So I started doing my networking around the base. So, you know, as first sergeant, ad additional duty, first sergeant and superintendent, you start to meet people, yeah. you know, you meet, go to the gym, you meet people at the gym, you start networking. And I figured out how big air force ran. Yeah. And so that, I thought that was good. So we're, we're doing still training, doing the big air force 20 years comes by I do start testing, going to test and I make it like out of the blue. Like I, I didn't think I was going to make it, but I ended up making senior and I, I look, okay, so now they're going to move me because there's no senior billet there. Right. And down at the weapons school, they haven't made the uh, WIC yet, you know, okay. the, the JTAC weapons school. They haven't made it yet. So I'm looking at the weapons school and the commander calls me up from down there. He goes, Rocco, we, we're going to start up a JTAC weapons school. We want you to be the superintendent. I said, well, here's the deal. I said, you have to give me a slot down there so I could PCA over there. Otherwise, they're moving me. Yeah. And I said, I'm going to Fort Hood. Ooh. I said, because there was either it was two positioned at Hood or Fort Bliss. I was like, I wanted brag, but I wasn't going to get brag, you know. So yeah. I was like, I, I said, well, I want to go. If I'm going, I want to Bliss. Somebody already took Bliss. So I said, well, I want to go. And this was when at Fort Hood, when there was two units down there, you know, one was the yeah, ASAC yeah. unit, the other one was the squadron. I said, well, I want to go to squadron. Well, O'Neill, Sean ended up taking that one. So I, said, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to the ASAC. And I was like, and I'm sitting here thinking, do I go? I look over at, at the, the DO over there at the weapon school. I'm chatting with him. They're not going to have it in time. So yeah. I have to make my decision. So I look at my son who's, who's in grade school now. And I'm like, I don't want to retire at Fort hood. And it was a rough decision. It was a very tough decision for me at the time. And I'm like, cause you don't know, you know, you're getting out. Sure. I mean, what, what are you going to do? What are you, what's your, yeah. you know, I just finished my first bachelor's, you know? So I'm like, okay, I got that under my belt, but what am I going to, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? You know? And right. I'm like, I got, I'm getting out. So I was like, I just put in, I said, I'm getting out. I have, you know, Lutz calling me up, you know, ripping me a new one because he's the chief <laughs> right. now, you know, so he's ripping me a new one saying, you, 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 you know, you owe the career field and everything. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hold on, buddy. I was like, I did 22 years. I said, I don't own nothing. Yeah. I said, I'm making this decision for my family. I'm looking at my son. I'm looking at where I want to be. I did the math and I'm like. I'm going to, I just, I got, I got to get out. I said, Mark, if you're telling me as a chief, I get it. Sure. I get it. Because as a chief, you should do that because that's sure. Yeah. You got to yeah. try to keep yeah. the good guys in for sure. Yeah. That's you you want to keep the guys in and, and, and you know, you want to uh, help, help them mentor other guys, you know, and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I get it. I told Mark, I said, but I said, but as a friend, you should understand, you know? Yeah. And he was like, okay. And he, so he hung the phone up and I was a little, <laughs> I was a little upset, you know, Sure, because he rips me a new one, you know, and the <laughs> next day I get a phone call from him and he goes, yeah, Rock, I want to apologize for yesterday. And I was uh -huh. like, I was like, cool, Mark. I said, if you're telling me as a friend, the chief, I said, I get it. But as a friend, I said, you should you understand. I said, what changed your mind? He goes, well, I went home and his wife, Sherry, you know, he's, we went home and he goes, I told Sherry that I was getting out and what he told, and then he told her what he told me. And she's like, why are you telling Rock that? He did 22 years. Why, why are you, you know, she ripped him a new one. And then so, <laughs> so he called me up and I was like, cool. So yeah. I, so I was, so I was like, cool. I got out. But before I was getting out, you know, about a year, year before I was getting out, I get a phone call and they had upgraded that air force combination metal to a bronze star. 
Oh, nice. Feet. And I, I didn't know that. I didn't know it. I, I, it was total surprise to me. And yeah. so um, Charlie Keebaugh's wife at the time, Tanya was the PA person or the PR person up at the, at Nellis. Oh, okay. And, and so Tanya was like, Hey, we want to do a piece on you, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I said, cool. I said, yeah, go, we'll put it in your hometown newspaper and everything. And I was like, cool. And they said the WIC commander, uh, the weapon school commander or the warfare center commander wants to come down and give you your broad star. And so they set this big to do up. CNN came out. I did a little oh, really? spiel for CNN and huh. it was so funny. But in that fight in Karbala, I, after that, AC-130 left, I called in some F-16s to do a flyby and, uh, you know, gun run because yeah. we had a sniper coming at us. And we had some mortars popping at us. And um, anyway, the commander comes down, uh, the general comes down, and he, he, goes, he, goes, he goes, Davis, he goes, that was you on the ground. I said, yeah. He goes, I was in the F-16. No way. I was like, get out of here. And he, <laughs> That is and awesome. I, so I had to test him. You know, I tested him. I was like, he goes, yeah, you guys had a circle. You had the circle of the wagons in that parking lot. And we had that big building that was blew out half the side, the sniper. Yep. He was there. Like that wow. was him. And it was such a small world. That's goes, awesome. Yeah. So he gave me my medal and, and uh, I, I, it was just awesome that he was there. He seen yeah. the whole thing. So he knew what, what went down. Oh man, and, that's uh, cool. So I ended up getting out. And one of the guys that was an old ALO that was there was working for SAIC. And he was like, it was a contracting job. Yeah. My son was still in school. And so he's like, hey, I got a job for you as a contractor. And so Avance comes out. He's working for them, too. And so we're working over at the KOC at Nellis as contractors. Uh, I mean, the money's OK, but I'm like you. I can't I can't travel any place because I get kids. My kids are here. You know, right. so if it was my kids, I could take one of those fun contracting you know, jobs. Exactly, but I, can't, yeah. I couldn't I couldn't do it. Yeah. So I, I missed out on some money, but that's fine. And so the ACC tells us we got to build an ASOC course. How ironic is that? I was going to go yeah. to the ASOC. Now I got to build the course for the ASOC, you know, so it's like, cool. <laughs> and so I build the course and um, we, we build the course. And so we start running the course at the KOC and as contractors, you know, so we, we ran through it. Lindsay and those guys came out. Lindsay was, uh, I think, chief at the time. So they, we had a bunch of the chiefs come out okay. and they showed us how um, they watched us run the course, you know, and uh, they said it's cool. And they approved it. Nice. And so we build that, we build the course. And then now the 6 CTS is starting to build up. So that it wants to be the, the overall CAS university, if you will, type thing. Right. So they're bringing the ASOC over to the the six ETS, and they wanted us to come over and teach over there. And we're like, okay, we go over there, but we're not. We're not. They don't have the contract. They were going to make GS positions. Oh, okay. And so being at the squadron level, we weren't going to get very. We told them. We said, okay, we're going to max it out. Yeah. If you want us to come over there, we want to be GS eleven step tens. Maxed out is because GS 11s at the squadron level make us step 10s, step it all the way up, yep, and all the way up. And we'll that's the only way you're going to sell us to come over there, otherwise, you're not going to have instructors, yeah. So, we had the upper hand, you know. So, nice. Uh, they ended up moving us over there, and we, uh, Bruce and I stuck around, became uh, GS 11s, step 10s there, which was good because it's job security, you know. So, sure, I was like, cool. And, and hung out there and uh, to teach the course and started coming along. And a uh, new commander comes in. He's like, he's like, okay, we want, we need, we got to build an academic side now. We want an academic, somebody to, to train us to how to do academics. And, and Avance was down at the schoolhouse. So he Don't knows how that. all that, how the academics is supposed to work. So, he moved over the app at academics and I was still there at the ASOC and we had guys coming in and out in charge and they needed, they were going to build up the civilian side of the JTAC course, you know? And I'm like, fuck. Nice. I'm like, yes, this is, <laughs> yeah. I can get out of the ASOC and go back and do the fun stuff. Right. 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 <laughs> so I go over there and I'm like, I volunteer to go back to, to, 
teach JTAX again. And I'll do in and out of the ASOC course, but I wanted to do the JTAX stuff as my primary. Sure. So I, I come out and I'm, I'm after right after the five year mark. So I have to go back through. Oh, the JTAC, JTAC training. Oh, oh, dang it. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I was only like two months. You know, I was like, Oh, dang. but according to the AFI, you know, I have to go back and through. And so I be and buddy Mac are going back through the course. Cause buddy's going down to Herbert, you know? Oh, right, right. Yeah. So buddy and I's in the class and we're getting trained up. Sergio Manessis is there. Spreeders there, you know, we got guys teaching us, Reedy's there, he's teaching us through through the course. And um, I'm just trying to get everything, but it's like riding a horse, you know, you get back on, sure. it's just, just redoing, going through the motions and we're running simulations now, the sims are built up, yeah. you know, we got the domes, domes, we got the uh, flat screens and stuff. And so we go through there and my last sim is with Spreeder. And Manessis, you know, so I'm in there and it's, I've got a bomber coming in. I'm working helos in this urban area. And so I'm bringing a bomber in. I told the helos, I said, I got a bomber coming in. I need you to move here. But I didn't hear the word established, right? Uh -huh. So I'm sitting there in the sim and <laughs> I'm controlling. I, I cleared the bomber hot and I threw my headset down and I was pissed. And Spreeder's like, what's going on? I was like, I didn't hear established for the helos, so I don't know if they were out of the area if I dropped through the airspace. And I said a few, you know, F-bombs were dropped in the sim, you know, and I was, I was right. upset because I, I, Spreeder goes, you tell them to move? And I said, yeah, I told them to move. And he goes, they moved. Oh, goes, Put your headset back on. I said, cool. <laughs> Put my headset back on. Ended up passing, and then I was in, so I moved over there. And I think I was the first civilian over there. And then we brought Benny over there. Benedict, who is a SEAL, retired SEAL. Benny's been there for a while. Okay. So it was me and Benny, and then we start building the program up. Bruce is building the academic side. I'm, we're building the JTAC side, and I'm getting GS-12 positions. Nice. So I applied for the 12, and I ended up getting the position. I got five guys, five positions that work for me. Awesome. And so now we're building up that, the um, the JTAC side, and uh, – I ended up getting, got my uh, bachelor's done from AMU. Then I was working on my master's at the time, finished my master's from in Homeland Security through Colorado Technical University in Colorado nice. Springs. I did that. And so I'm a GS. So we move up a GS 12 and step 10 pushes set of step five. So I was like, cool. So, cause you can't get paid less than what you're getting paid. You know, if you're GF step 10, it has to be more on a 12 than a step 10. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So that puts you like Because if you start at a, at a 12, it's more, lower than a 11 lower step than, 10. Yeah, okay, yeah. gotcha. Then you're okay. making. So they put you in a step five. So nice. hired a bunch of guys. And um, and now I realized at that time, I was relevant. You understand what I'm saying? So I, I yeah. like people were deploying. People were going over to Afghanistan, still doing the job. You know, I retired in 08. Did the ASOC stuff till 09. Then at the end of 09, 010, I started doing JTAC stuff again. So yeah. we're still getting guys deployed. Oh, so sure. I'm so I'm relevant and I'm teaching the guys and I'm training the guys on, you know, how important it is to be in in with your army unit, talk with your army unit, understand what their needs and want, you know, and I'm relevant. I'm giving them my examples and and stuff, trying to how important it is to understand how laser works, understand how urban, urban fighting works, how, you know, right. and it starts moving along. And I feel pretty good about myself because now I'm like, you know, because now I'm relevant yeah. and turns around guys aren't deploying anymore. Yeah. And now we're getting guys straight out of tech school. So oh, these are right. brand new, brand new JTACs. Yeah. And, I'm looking at him like, wow, this is going to be different. It goes to the FTU, and now I'm trying to figure out how to stay relevant. I could teach them all my stuff. I can give them some good examples, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm becoming the old guy, you know. So, <laughs> but I got to maintain maintain the gym and maintain my, you know, the guys are giving me a hard time. The <laughs> JTACs that are coming in now are smarter, yeah, more physical. You know, I mean, they're. 
they're beasts, you know, the guys that yeah. are coming in now. And uh, I see Lundquist and the guys are starting to retire. You know, the Chiefs are starting to retire. And now we're becoming the old guys, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and we're, we're discussing amongst ourselves and talking with the guys and talking with the commander how to stay relevant. What, what where are we going with it? That technology is is booming, so it's coming beyond what we were used to. You know the oh for sure map compass, you know the plugger. You know now it's the dagger, and it's you're plugging into this. Everything's connected together. You know and everything's on a little computer. That's yeah, you know, super oh, it's fun. all Link sixteen stuff. You know everything's changing, yeah. and so these young kids coming in, and you know they're at they're at Eagle one twenty. All right. You know, what I'm you know what I'm saying? So the guys are like, the, the young kids are coming in. Rock, what uh, what flight were you? I'm Eagle. I was Eagle 15. They're like, what? <laughs> well, you know, they get me. You know, they get like, I'm like, all right, whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, whatever. And uh, so they give me a hard time, you know. And uh, but the the guy, the young kids are smarter. They've got they've got more equipment. They've got more, you know, stuff. They they've they're they don't know how good they have it now sure. to compare to what, what we had it. But the guy, the kids are coming in. They're just, I've got, I've had guys come through that have bachelor's degrees that have master's degrees. I've had guard guys that come in that are lawyers. Wow. That are, that are um, a physicist Jeez. and they're coming in, they're coming in as enlisted guys because they want to do that job, Yeah, you know? And we switched over to special warfare, you know, so we're Air Force Special Ops now. So it that changes the whole perspective of TAC B. Sure. And so the guys are coming in. And the problem is, though, some of them all expect to be door kickers. Yeah. And the expectation, you know, they get trained to do that. I mean, that's what they're trained in phase one and coming into phase two where they start becoming JTACs and right. learning the, the, the real job. And that's what they expect. But in the big picture now it's changing like i don't know if the guys are ever going to do type ones again i was going to ask you how all the changes that are coming down the how yeah. how is that affecting your training like are you are you guys morphing into the, like the um like then what they have like set teams now or i i can't remember what you know the, the tech yeah. dc2 type stuff like are you yeah. changing oh yeah to, okay. i can't i can't get into the the details but we get we get I get, I still get the Intel briefs, which is, gotcha. which is cool. It doesn't matter to me, you know, but I mean, I get the, the, the Intel briefs from the next fight. A lot of that stuff is going to be taken care of before we get there. Sure. And so we're going to be the, the deep guys, but we're going to be, like you said, more of a command and control function yeah. than a direct action Eyes on target. By yeah. eyes on target. I, 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 but we still train to it. We still, sure, we're sure. still train to that. But I, I don't, I, I just see it like the Link 16, all this, the digital stuff that's going, that you can do. You don't even have to talk to an aircraft anymore. All right. You know, you don't even have to talk to them. You just punch it in and send it and go, you know. All right. And and I, I the, the human error has been taken out of the, out of it, you know, the only way mm -hmm. in the human area is you push wrong as a nine instead of a zero or whatever the case may be, you know, sure. but, but it, it's, it's changed and the kids are so smart on this stuff. Yeah. Like I, I'm just beginning to, you know, I'm the old head. I don't want to convert. I'm like, dude, somebody's going to shut the satellites down. We're going to get, you know, we're <laughs> yeah. then you're going to have to go back to the camp and come you know, but right, right, right. Um, I'm still teaching the kids to, to look at the map, look in front of them. Yeah. And I gave, I gave a, uh, I finally got my C back, so I'm doing evaluating, you know. Oh, okay. And I still get, I still get, I still have to get my evaluation every year. They take me out to the field. I told them, though, the the running joke in the squadron is like, yeah, when you take Rock out, there's no combat situation. He's because he's not running anywhere. <laughs> like, I tell, right. I tell, yeah. I tell, I'm telling they're like, hey, Rock, there, you take a fire over there. Nah, not today. Nah. Not today. Not today. <laughs> not, today not today. So that's the running joke, you know. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, you go out and I have I see a lot of the guys are got their little computer right here on their chest and they're popping yeah. it down. And there could be a, a target could be a 200 meters in front of them and they're looking at their 
Yeah. I, I, but it's, yeah. that's what they're used to. You know, that's right. what they're used to. And you have to tell them, look up, you could get it done faster. If you just look up and see the exactly. target and you could get it done way quicker, you know? Yep. And so we're training the students to do that, but we're building the scenarios to put them in that situation where they have to look up. Nice. Because as an instructor, I can, I can, I can change this scenario and still meet the DLOs. Right. But I'm going to force you to look up. I'm going to force yeah. you to use your binos. I'm going to force you to use your laser. Yeah. I'm going to force you to do things because we could check those blocks and it, and it makes you understand that there's other ways to skin a cat than by looking down at your computer. Sure. You know? And yeah, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. You want to be like, look, you, yeah. I got it. This is definitely the, an easy way to do it. And you yeah. should probably be very good at this, this computer, but also have the other stuff in your hip pocket just in yeah. case. You know, yeah. You know and there's, and there's a like, Sean comes out and he's, he's uh, the warrior pack guy now, you know? So, oh, right. Right. Yeah. 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 So Sean comes out all the time and Sean and I chat and, um, um, my biggest concern is we, we all know what weight of vines are. We all know that oh, yeah. you know, when you're running through the forest, there's something's going to grab you and it's going to flip your. Yeah, the whole reason you went around and walked the road that day or whatever. Yeah, it was because of the weight of vine. <laughs> right, but right. you see, they got all these wires hooked up. And one of the guys that came out, he works on the Young Tech piece, uh, Guterres, I think his name is. He works over the 422. It was the first time meeting him. Mm-hmm. And he was. we were out on uh, NT at the Nellis uh, training range the other day, mm-hmm. working with some May tens and his wires, you know, he's got it all in his little warrior pack thing in the back and it all works fine. But once one wire messes up, that messes the whole thing up. So he was, you know, he spent 10 minutes trying to get comms because of his, all the wires and stuff hooked in the yeah. back. But I mean, they, they find a way to, to, you know, how the Rangers tie everything off and sure. make it, they're going to have to figure out a way to hide everything because not everything's going to be in an open desert. Right. Yeah. And so you got to figure out a way to, to fix it, to make everything. So the wait a minute vines don't get you, but. Which kind of brings up another problem because if you hide everything, then if you do have an issue, then you got to unhide it, dig in there and try to find, you know, what's going on, which so maybe they could find a way to quickly troubleshoot, you know, your wiring system. That might be something, but yeah. 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 And the guys are, I mean, they're good at that. They understand they can troubleshoot that stuff. But yeah. you're absolutely right. Huh? I mean, now you're in the middle of a firefight and you just sent the nine line. And now what do you do? Now you can't, right. you don't have comms with him now. You've lost, you know, you lost your, your link and, and everything. So now how are you going to fix it? You know, so now it's yeah. those things that come through. But the training these guys are getting is just unbelievable. They're, doing, right C- here. they're doing CQB, they're firing weapons, they're shooting and maneuvering. That's you awesome. know, we're not doing that much here. But the future plan is to bring the FTU that's down in Camp Bullis, bring them up to here at Nellis. And we got an area two. The PJs are going to be leaving pretty soon. Okay. And they're going to be heading down to, uh, I, I think they're moving to Davis Mountain because they're consolidating them all. And we're okay. going to just move over and take their spot and run the whole thing out at area two, which is a separate from Nellis, but still under Nellis, but it's a separate area. That's well, at least the in the same general location as what yeah, you guys are yeah. doing. Yep. Okay. And then they have, uh, they got, uh, have you been to the gyms yet for the tackies? Uh, I've seen them. Yeah. Oh. It's crazy. <laughs> dude, dude, they, I walked down there, they got the Gator Dome. It's got a 50 yard field. They got eight different sections of weights. Yeah. They got, uh, we got two guys down there that are smoking the dudes, you know, we got, <laughs> right. uh, yeah. you know, I mean, this thing is, and it's just for you. Right. Like it's nobody else can go in that, you know, like, right. We like I could go down there and use it. Anybody that works at the six can go down there and use it. Not the not the spouses or anything yet because they they don't want uh, it's a liability thing. I guess sure sure force and so they don't want to do it. But you go down there and those boys are getting smoked. Yeah. But they're animals. But like you were and saying, they, it's not just the gym. It's like they have strength and conditioning coaches. They have physical yeah. therapists. They have everything. Psych docs. I mean, it's just so awesome what they're doing. Everything. Now. And and then like and then the selection process for soft has changed completely. Yeah. Like it's, you know, like Lunk and I were talking the other, you know, the other day he come out, uh, him and Janet came out and we were sitting around and I told him, he said, he says, he said, yeah. He said, I said, dude, you guys are giving psych tests down there now and everything, you know, cause he was in charge of that. Yeah. And he goes, yeah. I guess, dude, I'm telling you right now. 
If you'd have gave any one of us that psych test, I said we would never have passed that. <laughs> no thing. way. I did. Do you think you think Griff would have passed that psych test? Yeah. I said no <laughs> way, dude. And he goes, he goes, I would have passed it. I said, Lunk, no, you wouldn't. Yeah. I said, no, no, you wouldn't, have, buddy. I said because it's it's we're a di- it's a different mentality now. Yeah, it's a, it's, it was a different mentality back then. And then yeah. I look at it the way that you said it earlier. It's like we give those young guys a chance. Mm-hmm. You know, we give them right. a chance. We give them the second chance. And I was that way when I was super yeah, same. I, I was like, dude, I'm going to give you this shot. The second time, I can't do anything to save you. That, right. That's, that's on you, dude. But I'm yeah. going to give you this chance. We get it. You know, and then the guy, the guy, uh, it does well. It's the same thing when you're training as a JTAC. You, you know, that some guys are have it rough, but once the guys come through that and make it through the selection process or make it through as a JTAC, um, they get better. Right. And, 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 you know, that initial, like, like I'm, I'm okay with looking at a student and going, and there's guys that come through that are sharp and you can go, yep, he's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Then you have guys that are on the fence mm-hmm. and then you have other guys that just don't get it, you know? Right. And so where do you draw that line? Where does that yeah. line come in and where do you go? Because you're affecting a guy's career. Sure. But then that guy comes in and then that guy does well. So yeah. maybe he just needed that extra training or maybe he needed that extra boost. So th- there's a lot of, a lot of discussion at the unit on where those guys go as far as JTACs and where, where you set them at, you know, because you don't sure. know, you don't want to, you know, hurt the guy's career, but you want to make him where he can, you know. But where, you can't send him to a unit and have him uh, control CAS or, or protect yeah. army guys and not do the, do well. So yeah. 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 Yep. Kind of and so, both. so now we're getting, now we've just trained it. This is going to be the first class that we are, you know, we used to do four mates for, mm-hmm. to become a JTAC. Now right. it's 1035. So they changed the form. So now you're doing a 1035, which is the same thing as a four mate. It's just <laughs> sure. added some stuff into it. Somebody wanted to name it and wanted to give it, a, you know, <laughs> right. get a, get a, uh, you know, a little blurb Emotion in their so. EPR or whatever, whatever, you know, yeah, yeah. and OPR. And so, um, now we're training. Now we're going to make give them the 1035, and they're going to become JTACs. Now, I'm old school, so if I was a commander and you send me a guy that's a JTAC already, what are, what are you going to do? Check him out. Make sure he's you're going to check him out, right? right so you're yeah. going to give him a whole nother eval. Yeah, a local like, check. Yeah, local check. He's going to be getting another eval, and so I don't know if we're killing. I mean, this is our first class to do this, so I don't know if, it, if we're if we're doing the right thing or if we're not doing the right thing, you know. But I know that the way we're training the guys, we're getting positive feedback from all the units, so we're we're good. Good. But if I'm a ground, if I'm a commander at a squadron, I'm going to want to check that guy out. Sure. So he's going to get another ten thirty five when he gets there. Yeah. To make sure that we're doing our. I mean, it's a check that we're doing our job here, you know. Yeah. But for sure. I don't and know. We'll I mean, s- and like you said, I mean. You're the way you do it there is standardized, but there these guys, some of that guy might go to an armor unit, he might go to yep. the Rangers, he might yep. go to SF, yep. he might go to a light, you know, an airborne unit. So you got you have to check him out in that environment to make sure he, you know, he he knows kind of what he's getting into when he gets to the yep. unit. So yeah, exactly. I don't think it's so unheard of. Yeah. Exactly. I, I and I think it's a good thing because um we've added two weeks onto this course. So and uh like the first week, uh first time we ran this ran it this time uh, we had an individual training. So like I had two guys in the sim with me, you know, we're talking basic, we do basic nine line. Then we, the next day we do de- air, airspace deconfliction. Oh, that's awesome. And then we do coordinated attacks. So we're going along and giving them, those are the things that the 12, you know, 12 steps of cast, the 12 the cadence, cast yeah. cadence. We want to get that down and make sure they know it. They get eight sims down at, at, Fort, at uh, Camp Bullis, come here. And we run them through four weeks of Sims here, and nice. then or three week, four weeks of Sims, a MOA, and an FTX week. So we got okay six weeks, and uh, the seventh week is just like a before and afters, you know, a couple of days of academics and academics. And Man, that. that's awesome! That but is it, it's, if you think yeah. about like the, what we got when we were mm-hmm. when we were coming up. You know, yeah. you go to JFCC for like two weeks, three weeks, or whatever yep. it was, and yeah, like you barely, oh, man. It's you barely so scratch you, you barely scratch the surface, and then you get right. here, and now these guys are getting way more training. 
and but we got to train them on equipment now. We got to train them on the the, the technology. We got to, you know, so these guys are all getting spun up and and going out to the field. But these guys are, I'm telling you, Jay, so smart. It, it's yeah. it's beyond what what we could ever ever imagine. And and to watch those guys train down there, man, yeah, they're D one athletes, you know, right? I right. Mean, it's it's, it's amazing. So cool. It's amazing. Yeah. But, and then I just finished another bachelor's. So knock that nice. out because I had to use my GI bill up. I wasn't going to give it back to him. So I used right. it up and knocked it <laughs> out. Again. So, so, but, um, and then it ended up, uh, you know, got, got married again. So yeah. my, my wife's from South Africa. And so she's, uh, Oh, no kidding. Yeah. She's, she's here. We went on a couple dates and, Ended up getting married with uh, down in at Nashville. Did you see that? Did you see it online? I don't think so. I think I missed we, it. I'll, we got I'll married. Go so we. So I was here. Sean comes out. I'm, a minion's going to be my best man, right? So I'm yeah. getting Sean to be my best man. And so I said, Sean. I said, you're going to be there. He's like, yep, cool. Jenny and him's going to be there. Cool. We're going to get this all squared away. I was like, who? Who's ordained? Because we're going to the. We were going to get married in Nashville at the Tac Fee reunion. Oh, okay. Because oh, yeah. we live in Vegas. We don't want to do it in Vegas. And we were already sure. going to the reunion. So I asked Maddie, I said, let's get married there. Had two weeks to plan it. And so Sean, Sean's here and we call up Leahy. So we're like, let's call Jeff up. Jeff's <laughs> our dame. Jeff's like, no, I can't make it. Kylie's coming oh. into town. So we call up Chesa. So I called Tim up. <laughs> so I called Tim up. I was like, Chachi, I was like, Chachi, are you ordained? He's like, no, man. He's like, I'm not. He goes, I go, I know you're going to be there. I go, we got to get somebody because I want to, I'm getting married. I want to get somebody. And I hear him typing. He goes, Hey, let me call you back. <laughs> so he hung the phone up. He calls me back and he's like, uh, rock. I'm good. I was like, <laughs> awesome. So Chachi's I marrying us. So Chachi's <laughs> marrying us. We fly in to Nashville. Maddie gets her dress the day before. We've yeah. got a wedding, a lady wedding planner for us at, at the, uh, at the um, Opry Land Resort there in okay. Nashville. And so we get there on Wednesday. Bo Cooks picks us up. Beav picks Maddie and I up. We go to Bo Cooks house. I mean, just get shit faced <laughs> at Bo Cooks house on Wednesday night. I mean, Maddie's, Maddie goes up, and goes to bed. She said, I don't even remember coming up to bed. And she's like, <laughs> and she goes, You just belly flopped in the bed and didn't take your clothes off for nothing, just passed out. <laughs> So Sounds next day right. we next day we get up we go we go I said I told Chaz we we're going into up to Nashville he lives outside Nashville mm -hmm. and I said hey we got to get we got to get uh, our wedding uh, certificate and uh, he says well let's just go to let's just go to Richmond County here and get it a little town he goes it's the same all over let's just yeah. do it let's do it here. So we went in there, Maddie walked in there, we got our marriage certificate, walked out, got to got to Nashville on that Thursday, and then the icebreaker was that night. And so we had a little talk with Chachi that day, and he's like, he's like, you know, a couple things to you know, I'm a little nervous because you know how sure, Chachi yeah. is. You know how Chachi is. He gets <laughs> he, you know how he is. He gets a little oh, yeah. yeah, you know, I'm like, oh, here we go. You know, <laughs> I don't know what to expect, but I'm like, Yeah. I had Bickle was there. I asked Dave to walk. Maddie down the aisle because Dave lives out here in Vegas. So, uh -huh. so, you know, her family wasn't in, she's got family in New Zealand, South Africa, and UK. So nobody's here in the U S okay. And my family wasn't there. So ask Dave to walk her down the aisle. Dave's good. She's got her wedding dress. We get everything squared away. So Thursday night we're at the icebreaker and Chachi announces it over the, the thing. Hey, tomorrow we got guys going to Fort Campbell to look at the the unit at Fort Campbell, and Rock's getting married tomorrow afternoon. If you guys want to show up for that, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, dude, I got 25 seats. You know, I'm like, yes, that's all. It's I like got. one of the events on the agenda. Yeah, for yeah, the yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's that's all I got. And, but anyway, they ended up giving us 60 seats, and so all the guys came. So Vivian was there. Oh, that's great. Brown was there. Beave was there. Gorilla was there. Uh, Bo Cook. Uh, Muller was there. We, I mean, it was awesome because it was all, all tack peas. The young guys were there. You know, I'm nervous. Sure. Chachi, Chachi's doing the the ceremony, and dude, he did outstanding. Like, yeah. And we ended up, we got married, and and uh, uh, came back here. It was just I couldn't ask for anything better. 
You That's know, awesome. I, I just could not have asked for anything better. When I got back here and I told Maddie, I, was, I, I told her, I said, listen, babe, I said, it's, it's done. <laughs> I said, we we found each other. It's over. I said, I just, mar- we just got married in front of all my friends. <laughs> right. I was like, so, so, you know, this is a, that's that, that alone. Huge deal. Yeah. It's a huge deal, you know, yeah. but yeah. So I've been out here and planning on, I'm going to stick around here. I got my sons in college. I nice. got two little girls that are here. And I, I like, I can't, I've been asked to do those contracting jobs, but I can't go do them. Yeah. So I got my kids are here, man. So, yeah, I think that's, two, I mean, it's important, you know, you got to be there yeah. for them. And I think that's yeah. a, that's, you know, you're talking about how you look, you missed out on some money, but that, that doesn't even matter. No, right? it, no. It, I got, I uh, got two stepdaughters. Yeah. They're both in college. So, I mean, we're, it's, it's a good, good life, man. Yeah. Yeah. But, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's awesome, man. This is, this, this has been great. I, 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 it's been such a long time since we talked aside from that mm-hmm. time you butt dialed me, but other than that, <laughs> I didn't mean to butt dial. I hit the number. <laughs> I just hit the wrong J. You know? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hit the number. No, but uh, yeah, it was. I, I, like you said, it's been so long since I talked to you. I, I was, I was really looking forward to catching up, and this was great. I, I yeah. really appreciate you doing this, man. It was yeah. really, really awesome. Yeah, no problem. I, it, it, dude, I, I miss you. If you get down here, dude, you got to come stop. Yeah, by. for we'll, sure. I, we'll, we'll have you over the house, and I mean, if you need a place to stay, we got plenty of room here. Okay. So, yeah, it's super easy. Don't have to. We're. I know you see, we go to a lot of hockey games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're we're like, but it's easy because we drive yeah. 15 minutes. We're at the game, so it's not. Yeah. And that, the only reason it's 15 minutes is because of traffic. Right. But uh, if there's enough room, uh, you know, we're close enough to the strip that if we want to go down there, we can go down there. If not, we can. We're away from the strip, you know. So, oh, okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yep. All right, man. I appreciate it, my man. Yeah, this was awesome. It was great catching up with you, man. Really. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it, man. I'll talk to you later. See ya.